So, um, I've mentioned it a few times, but if I, if I may trauma dump myself uh, today, um, the Steven Universe movie is obviously what launched me into becoming a Steven Universe fan artist, and before that I was kind of in like a five-year art rut. It was, a, it was a pretty bad period in my life. There was deaths of loved ones and, and friends, and I was in a job where I wasn't being treated very well, and I was pretty depressed, and I didn't draw a lot in that period. So, uh, And I started watching Steven Universe in like 2018 because the Pink Diamond twist actually like intrigued me. Uh, I, saw it, I saw it explode all over Cartoon YouTube, and I was like, wait a minute, so... Steven's, like, perfect, ideal, dead mom was one of the bad guys? And I was like, that's interesting. Uh, so I was like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe it's time for me to watch this show finally. So, you know, I was still in that bleak period when I began to watch Steven Universe. And I didn't become, like, a super-duper major fan right away. I mean, I started out thinking, oh, man, this show is, you know, it's pretty cute. Uh, it's normal. Why is everybody so pissed off at it? I don't understand that. And, you know, because the early episodes are a little more, like, early 2000s type of a show. They don't, you know, it's it, it, it's not really reflective of what the show would later become. Oh, let me turn up the music. It's not, like, it's barely, I think this is just a quiet song, too. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, I was, I was enjoying the show. And I, I started getting into the lore more when we got into, like, um, Mirror Gem and stuff. And Pearl admitted, like, all the monsters they fight are, are fellow gems. Because I didn't know that going in. All I knew was, like... Rose was Pink Diamond, and Garnet's a Fusion. That's basically what I knew going into the show. So I still was surprised by some things. But I don't know what it was about the movie. I had just changed jobs. I finally, like, everything came to a head at that terrible job I was at. My friend and co-worker had just died of pan pancreatic cancer. It, she went downhill very quickly. Um, and... Uh, Management was already terrible there, and the owner was already- she had no idea what she was doing. She was always, like, just mean to me all the time. And I, I finally just stormed out. I, I had enough. I just stormed out. And, like, within a month, I got my job I have now at the dog place. So, everything's fine. And what was great about that was, all of a sudden, it was 2019. COVID hit right after that, didn't it? All of a sudden, I was an essential worker, which I would not have been at my old job. So, that actually turned out to be a boon. But, so the movie came out just as I had gotten out of that really bad period of my life. And I kind of hyper-fixated on it. I may or may not have had a, um, a bootleg copy on my Google Drive and had been, like, just listening to it at work and, like, watching it, like, repeatedly. Uh, I, I may have, like, uh, gotten really autistic about it or something. Yeah, I did. So, uh... <laughs> So it kind of it kind of wormed its way into my brain, and then I did my my first like little switcheroo image, thinking it was just gonna be like one drawing, and everything just kind of spiraled out of my control from there, and and here we are, uh, four years later. So, <laughs> so the point of all that was that the Steven Universe movie means a lot to me. But uh, okay, I'm 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 procrastinating. I, I'm I'm preparing to take psychic damage again. So ever since I made that big video about Steven Universe, which still to this day is making grown men shit their pants. If it mm, no, dude, you didn't trigger nobody. It's just you, you don't understand anything you watch, ever. I proved that last week when you didn't understand Utena. But though, I'm, though to be fair to you, <coughs> Lily, I'm pretty sure you didn't actually watch it. They regurgitate any points from Lily Orchard's algorithm pleasing, but overall pretty horrendous hit piece on the show, or have no legitimate legs to stand. Oh, that was that was Vox. That was Vox last time. Then you got beef with Vox. Look, I said before, <clears throat> I got my problems with Ostrug Vox, but if it's me and Vox against Lily Orchard, Vox is my fucking bestie. <laughs> Vox is cool now. I don't know. I, I started watching his shit again. He's 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 calmed down a bit. Uh, not not vocal wise, but like like uh, uh, he, he's loosened up a bit as a content creator. He's good. <laughs> and on besides memes dunking on it, you can safely tune them out because they don't have the slightest clue of what they're actually talking about. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what you're talking about, Lily. How do you? How did you? How did you construe that as a win? <laughs> Oh, yes! Yes, everyone thinks I'm retarded! I'm so brilliant! Yes! Oh! <laughs> 
I guess Vox just said, Lily Orchard, you don't know what you're talking about when it comes to Steven Universe, and Lily, Lily decided that was him shitting his pants, I guess. Like I said, I, 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 I was kind of hard on Vox during Future, because he was just coming out with all these, like, these whack-ass theories and clickbait shit, and I was like, bro, come on. <laughs> but he's, like I said, he's, he's pretty good now. But I guess, I guess Lily Orchid has beef with Vox. Pretty sure he's got more subscribers than you. Actually, let's check. Let's check, huh? <laughs> Round table, awestruck Vox. Let's see. He has 1.22 million subscribers. How many do you have, Lily? Oh, 137k. Oh, that's, you know, you'll, you'll get there one day, Lily. You'll get there one day. Yes, yes, your anguish sustains me. A common refrain from my audience is to ask me to cover the movie and future. I didn't really bother for a while, as nothing was really different. The same core problems that influenced the main show also influenced its two spin-offs, and I really don't want to touch the movie in particular because everyone was acting like it was the greatest musical to ever exist. Hell, a com- Because it is. No, I'm kidding. Actually, actually, my, my, my favorite, um, my favorite, uh... <sighs> shut up. Shut up, Kaiser. My favorite musical is Little Shop of Horrors, I will say that. Yeah, I have like I have like a hundred and forty YouTube followers. Show sure there. <laughs> Common refrain in the comments of the big video was often, "Did you at least like the songs?" No. The music is a weird sticking point for a lot of people, and for how do you not like the look? Even if, even people who hate Steven Universe say the songs are good because they are at least at least after um. At least after uh, Stronger Than You. Uh, honestly, I think a lot of the songs before that are kind of weak. I, okay, there's Giant Woman, I suppose. I suppose, but that was still just okay. But, like, how do you... If, the producers is funny, Kaiser, but it's not my favorite. My favorite's still Little Shop of Horrors. It always will be. You can't stop me. <laughs> my favorite musical of all time. And not the movie. I mean, I've seen it on stage, like, four times. For some, the only reason to watch the show. Which was why I didn't mention the music in the video, because it was the thing people were the most parasocial about, and it wasn't very good. But recently, I've started working- Parasocial? No, they're just telling you you got bad taste if you think the music in Steven Universe is bad. <laughs> like, even the background music is full of light motifs, and it's, it's scored to the action on scene, and it's like, it's super good. Super classy, it's awesome, good shit, good shit. Working on other projects that take a more comedic approach to critique, my mom tells me to look for Professor Oak, and when I go to check the grass, because naturally that is what? the first place anyone would look, he comes out of my house, so I guess he was hiding in the closet. Are you my dad? But I want that juicy XP, so I barged into Are every cabin and beat up everyone's pets play? like the completely reasonable person I am. I don't have a problem, fuck you. But Kurt's broken his hip, and therefore can't help. It's almost like diving headfirst into a well isn't a smart decision, but that's just my opinion. So I brought out Mantine, and looking at his moveset, can you guess which move I decided to use against the Dragon-type Pokemon? That's right, it was Surf. It's alright, I won anyway, no harm done. Anyway, the thing- What the fuck is going on? Why are you advertising, in the middle of a Steven Universe video, why are you advertising that you made a worse Let's Play than Doug Walker? I, I, I do not understand your logic on anything, Lily. Why do you just inject these things randomly into the middle of your videos? Why can't you just make a fucking point? Just make a fucking point, Lily. Just make a fucking point. Why are you randomly talking about Pokemon, you fucking Spurg? And I say this as a Spurg. Man, you gotta, you gotta... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta- you gotta try to control the hyperfixation sometimes. You don't just edit this shit into the middle of your fucking videos. What is the matter with you? <laughs> Again, I'm more angry about something other than Steven Universe. <laughs> Nobody come at me for saying Spurg. I have papers. I, I- I was officially diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome, which is just autism now, but, you know. <laughs> it was the 90s. It was- it was fine. It was like 97 or something. But I, I think I think the words Spurg and Spurgy are very funny. I first heard um I think Simon on the Yogg's cast say it. He said uh he said Lewis had made him go all Spurgy because he he, he fucked up building something. <laughs> and I was like, I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> that is my new favorite word now. <laughs> Thing is that rock is weak to grass, so 
Yeah, I'm kind of, like, taking back the R word, as you might have noticed. I'm, you know, like, we were nice. We were nice to the little Zoomers. We said, okay, we can stop saying retard, you know, fair enough. And then they started telling us we can't say spooky, and it's like, all right, you're taking it a little too far, kids. <laughs> you know? I think, uh, I think we need to, like, uh, reassert adult control here a bit. <laughs> oh, fuck, I just remembered. Roxanne's a school teacher. <laughs> this joke was in terrible taste. Hey, Lance, what? Hey, it's, it's off, it's off, it's off. What joke? You didn't make a single fucking joke of that entire segment, you unfunny fucker. Will you please talk about Steven Universe the movie? It's off. <laughs> Throw this phone away, Lois. I join chat out by the grass, and they say they're going to- You spent more time making this shitty little animation than you- Like, is, here, is this like- are you sponsoring yourself? What the fuck is going on here? I- Ah, oh, Sanchini, there you are! There you are! I have a gift for you, Sanchini. <laughs> Look what I did. So now every time I scream in rage, we will have official Super Saiyan 2 art. <laughs> you inspired this, Sanchini. I hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> okay, see Manga Cell here in the 1940s. Um, um, Spook was very briefly a pejorative for, for black World War II soldiers. Uh, and then it wasn't anymore. And so it doesn't matter. <laughs> that was like the guy on fucking Instagram the other day that tried to convince me that Jezebel is a racial slur. And when I corrected him and corrected him based on his own sources, uh, he just like kept insisting that he was educating me. Oh, you, didn't you just see it, Sanchini? Look! Woo! Ah! <laughs> Super Saiyan 2! <laughs> I probably should have turned it facing in the other direction. I'll fix it next time. Ah, I made this specifically for the Lily Orchid video. Because uh, I, I, I cut together my whole Utena, Utena ranting into one YouTube video. And I got to that part where I screamed, Oh, so you have seen the movie. And I peaked the mic. So I made a little... I made my little Super Saiyan. <laughs> They're probably should be Kaiser. I was lazy. All right, you motherfucker. Shut up. Uh, I might be able to. I might be able to run this program with gifts, though. I could. I might be able to make it a gif. So I'll see if I can do that. I kind of did a little last minute this week, but uh, there's always there's always there's always room for improvement. <laughs> they can jump over the grass to avoid the Pokemon. Something that I naturally encourage because I want to see their face. Get okay. Yeah. No. Let, we're fucking. I'm not l listening to your unfunny let's play. Would you get to the fucking video? The movie opens with this grand. It's okay, Lily hasn't even talked, started talking about Steam Universe yet, just said a bunch of bullshit and then did a preview of an unfunny Pokemon Let's Play for reasons I cannot even begin to comprehend. Uh, so, <laughs> where's the super D-duper saying? I wouldn't say I hate Lily, I would say I strongly dislike Lily. I, I think Lily is a fucking idiot who likes to be confidently incorrect about just about, just about anything. Is that maybe Pokemon? I don't- I mean, I don't understand Pokemon. I'll take Lily's word for it on the Pokemans and, I guess, the My Little Ponies. Because I don't know those things. But the things I do know, Lily knows nothing about. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know what people mean when they say, Oh, I hate this thing. They don't really mean, like, pure, unadulterated hatred or anything. It's just a colloquialism. But I, I, I'm always hesitant to say I hate a person. You know, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just, like, uh, a big bleeding heart under my cantankerous exterior or something. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I'm mad at Lily's choice of, of, of editing style is what I'm mad at. Ugh, like I'm always getting mad about something else. See, you don't trigger me about Steven Universe, Lily. You just trigger me with your general incompetence. <laughs> you know, it's it's very insulting. And curtain call while the singer declares that everyone believes in Steven. This already sets the mood because the entire series has been entirely about this one specialist goodest little boy. Which is fine if you happen to like Steven, but as most of you are aware by now, I fucking hate this. Okay, well, well, Lily's willing to use the word hate for a fictional character, but hey, idiot, did you notice all the Cinderella parallels with Pink Diamond in, in the show? And you know how the movie opens like an old storybook Disney movie because of the, the, the Cinderella parallels and that's, that's the, that's the joke? That's the motif? You dipshit. <laughs>
Bat's kid. And now they're singing about how he's the most precious little ubermensch in the galaxy and will save us all and Steven die. Lily just cannot <laughs> let go of the fucking Nazi thing. I'm already take I'm already taking psychic damage. Listen to me. <laughs> For your sins. It's interesting because Steven supposedly being innately compassionate has only ever been a stated character trait for about two seasons at this point. He was always compassionate, but in a rather tame, typical manner that you just kind of expected from a kid. It was around season four as Steven's attitude started to become more and more flanderized that his compassion became something the show was really drilling into people's heads rather than just demonstrating it. Flanderize. I mean, he's like a little gremlin in the first season. He's like, he's just a little chaos child. He's just like a little barefoot boy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But again, I, I suspect Lily had made this video without actually having, like, rewatched the series before, like, making a video on the movie. Because, you know, why would you, why would you put an effort, effort as, like, an actual YouTube essayist and not, like, an idiot like me who just slaps together stream clips, you know? <laughs> <laughs> with some with some footage taken from YouTube. <laughs> but ironically, this shift happened around the time people started to criticize the way he was written. Around about bismuth. Well, good. Lily Orca doesn't understand how animation production works. Hey, Lily! By the time the season was airing that you would have been criticizing, the next season was probably already locked in for writing and being storyboarded and, and probably being animated. Idiot. It takes, like, an entire year to make one episode of animation. <laughs> yes, how on earth did that happen? Look, the all-loving hero isn't new, but Steven's the first time I've seen where the all-loving hero's compassion is something everyone has to bring up all the fucking time. Like, I consider the poster child for the all-loving hero to be Sora, and even Sora had nuances to that. Like, just like the last video, you claim that Steven is, like, all good, ne like, you know, everyone, like, looks up to him, he's the POV character, like, his his goodness is, like, objectively correct, and he gives friendship speeches. None of that's true about Steven Universe. All of that is true about Sora Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> and this idiot in the last video we watched said, I didn't appreciate the subtle, nuanced writing of Kingdom Hearts when I was 13, but I replayed it as an adult and realized it's really deep. And now I'm writing a coffee shop AU. Hey, <laughs> but not about Kingdom Hearts with original characters that nobody gives a shit about. <laughs> no way! Oh. I will appreciate a Demix uh, reference, though. <laughs> Anyone from the organization who'd like to be next? It turns out the story is actually being told by White Diamond, who is welcoming Steven in as their newest little colonizer. But then he pulls the rug out from under them on live TV by saying, Nah, I'm gonna go back to Earth and become a debate bro. The Diamonds beg him not to go. What the fuck are you even getting that? Like, did you just want to make a debate bro joke, but you, you, you didn't... You didn't... <laughs> I, I don't understand, like, your jokes just make no goddamn sense. It, it's like, it's like almost Chris Chan levels of just abstract and, and nonsensical. It's fascinating in a way. Demix is an important point in your case, too. Well, Demix is the most important character in Kingdom Hearts, obviously. <laughs> uh, why would you want to pretend Sora doesn't exist? Look, Kingdom Hearts is, is, is... A complete fucking mess, but I at least like the first two games. I do. They were cute. The first game especially was at least, you know, simple and straightforward. The second one is really where they, uh, they started to, uh, get, you know, fall down the Squeenix hole and just start talking about the cornerstone of light and the whatever the fuck else, you know, and the Keyblade. It's not the Keyblade, Key-E-Y, it's the Keyblade, Q-I, because, because fucking Nomura... <laughs> in a scene I'm sure was shot directly from Rebecca Sugar's own fantasies. I feel it's worth pointing this out whenever, like, harem anime shit is happening, but Rebecca Sugar is a weeb, and so when you have all these grown women fawning over this little boy that just so happens to have all the same opinions as Sugar, really? I, I can't help but feel like we're watching someone's private collection. R really Like, really, bro? Like, are you... <laughs> 
how do you get harem anime out of this unless you're, like, one of those weirdo fucking straight guys who, you know, like, just wants to draw porn of Steven Universe characters without actually caring about the show, like, like, you yourself said in the last video I watched that they were silly little aunties, that is clearly what they're being here, and also, the diamonds are kind of the Greek chorus of this movie, they open and close the movie with a, with a, with the reprisal of their song. The diamonds are just the little Greek chorus of this film. It's not that hard to understand. And like I said last time, I love the diamonds in the movie. Fuck you. I love this. I love how Steven now just recognizes that they're just... They're, 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 there's also people who don't know what the fuck they're doing and never have. <laughs> you know? You know? The whole thing about coming of age and learning that the adults around you and the people who raised you are just human and... They, they may not always actually know what the fuck they're doing, and they're just as lost and confused as you are, you know, that that whole thing about, about you know, becoming an adult, you know, how, how that happens. I guess you never found out, Lily, since you apparently estranged your entire family. <laughs> and you proudly said that, so I, I don't know. Maybe you never learned your other family members are flawed people, too. Come on, just let us adore you. What? <laughs> like, that- like, that is such a stretch. And you know, people who haven't seen Steven Universe are going to believe this. Let's see what some of the comments say. Actually. Um, hasn't had any comments in like 11 months, no surprise there, huh? No, oh, that's just the top comments. Let's see the newest ones. Oh, yeah, these people are crazy. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> of course I'm a flawed people. No, I am a, I am a shining goddess who has never done anything wrong in my entire life and never fucks up anything and all of my art is perfect and I never forget to draw the star on Crystal Gem Spinel's uh, bloomers ever. <laughs> Credit where it's due, Patty, Lisa, and Christine are putting their whole pussy into absolutely atrocious songwriting. Did you have to say that about these women? Did you have to say they're putting their whole pussy into singing about these three very talented, celebrated women? Did you, did you have to do that? D really? Did you? That's just, um... Yeah, okay, moving on. <laughs> if there was ever a redeeming quality of Steven Universe, it's the fact that they waste all, and I mean all of their fucking money on very talented singers and make them sing just the worst lyrics imaginable. Don't you what? Ever listen to your inner conscience? Oh, I'm sorry, babe. I wasn't listening. What? Hell, sometimes the So you didn't even give an example of a Steven Universe t t song. You just... Like... Maybe actually play all of uh, Let Us Adore You, because it's really fucking good, and it's like one of those 1960s harmonizing ballads. I, I don't know exactly what you call that style of music, but... They'll waste their money on an expensive singer and have them do nothing. <laughs> hey, did you ever wonder why the animation's so shit? I think... Well, actually, the animation in universe, Steven, the animation in universe, Steven Galaxy, blah blah. I'm already taking psychic damage from you, Lily. God damn it! What type? I thought I was fairy dark. I guess. Do they take psychic damage? What? <laughs> I don't really understand Pokemon. <laughs> Maybe I can trigger Lily back. Hey, Lily, if you watch this video, I'm gonna misunderstand Pokemon. Guess what? I've only ever played Pokemon Go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway. All right, I'm getting a little too spicy now, but um, <laughs> what was I even talking about? <laughs> I don't even remember. Like, uh, yeah, I, I said last time too that I think making uh, the fusions uh, uh, celebrity guest star m musicians was a terrible idea because then you know it was hard to get them back to actually have a voice, and you know I'm one of those people who kind of. Who kind of low-key, um, wishes Steven Universe was a little bit more of a battle anime. I, <laughs> you know, I, got, I still kind of do. I still kind of do. So it would have been fun to see fusions utilized more in that regard. Even though, you know, they're supposed to just be symbolic relationships and just look cool. But, um, 
Yeah. So I can at least agree with that, but, like, saying, like, Just Let Us Adore You is a bad song. <laughs> Are you high? I'm high, and I can still recognize it's a good song. You're eating Hershey's. Ah, uh, eat better chocolate. <laughs> I think we just found why. The diamonds are all like, Steven, we stopped doing fascism, kind of, not really. Please give us head pats. Just Yeah, that is exactly what they're doing here. They don't they still don't quite get it. You know? I mean what remember what White's saying here? She's like, I'm even saying please and thank you to lower life forms. <laughs> It's a joke, Lily! I mean, you just demonstrated a whole solid section of, you know, you don't understand humor, so I guess, you know, maybe that's your problem. You don't know what the fuck jokes are, you don't know what's funny, because you're, you're a very unfunny, very miserable person. So, I mean, I'm a miserable person, but I'm the kind of miserable person who becomes a comedian. <laughs> Watching these monsters beg for the approval of this little white boy who's just become the center of the universe by virtue of his own boring white guy. No, okay, so like a lot of people think Steven might be Jewish for 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 one thing with the last with you know the last name DeMeo, which was Greg's original last name, and also he's you know he's got that little white boy fro, <laughs> and also you know it's just, I'm just putting it out there. Minus. <laughs> Nobody show Rebecca Sugar and and Rin. She might actually die of horny. Steven Rin Who? What was that? Is that a World of Warcraft reference? Because I know that's another thing Lily references all the time that I just do not understand. Returns to Earth, where we see Connie again, just before she tells us that she has to go and not be in the movie, which is a dick. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Like, they, they had to just get Connie out of the movie because they knew she would solve the problem within, like, ten minutes. <laughs> I do wish Connie had been in the movie more. I wish that Cartoon Network didn't make them, like, have to raise the stakes of the movie and because their original concept was mostly going to be about uh, Spinell learning about what real friendship is, but they wanted a ticking time bomb in the movie, so that's why we got the injector, which I think it worked out in the long run. I mean, the injector is completely unexplained, but... Okay, it was World of Warcraft. All right, all right. Oh, yeah, I know he got his hair from pink, but uh, come on, it's it's a little white boy fro. Come on. <laughs> I know, I know boys who have that hair, hair texture. <laughs> and shame, because I quite like Connie. She's the better version of a protagonist by virtue of having revolutionary things like goals, a character arc, noticeably likable character traits, as opposed to Steven, who's just kind of... Actually, wait a minute. Did Connie have a character arc? I guess, like, she learned to stand up to her mom? Connie's always pretty stable, though, in comparison to Steven. I think that's very purposeful, because she has, like, she has a more normal life, you know, a more traditional life, and she, you know, she's a little more put together, she's a little more supported, and Steven's life is just kind of chaos. So, you know, they, they contrast each other in that, in that manner. <clears throat> Hold the phone. Is that a, is that a nude painting he did with Garnet? Yeah, bro. That was one of the episodes. Vidalia painted that. It was pool hopping. It was pool hopping! It was pool hopping, Lily! Which you clearly didn't watch because you said that they never bring up Garnet feeling like she doesn't have control of things and, and isn't the, the, the stoic leader she acts like. So, you never watched fucking pool hopping, did you? You piece of shit. <laughs> Why is that there? No, really, why is that there? Sugar does Pool like hopping! interviews a minute. Why did nobody ask about this? Like, for you, d you didn't watch the whole fucking show. You didn't watch the whole fucking show. Let's look it up, because I'm right. Pool hopping, Steven, universe, painting, gah. Shoot, um. Yeah, there it is. It's in the episode, pool hopping, because remember... At one point, they go see Vidalia, and 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 Garnet says, "Paint me like one of your amethysts." I, I can't do an English accent very well, <laughs> and, and you know that was the pose they were doing, and that was the final picture Vidalia did because she's a fucking weirdo and she she paints things like that, like like look, see the universe, yellowtail painting. Let me find it. Uh. Anyway, you know, yeah, this is what Fidelia does, okay? <laughs> She's an artiste. 
All right, you know, or you gotta, you gotta, like, you gotta censor art now, Lily? Or is that what you're, you're all about art? So there, oh, okay, there's the, there's the final page. See, she, she doesn't, she doesn't, Vidalia doesn't draw just life. She draws what she sees, you know? That is the brilliance of her work. <laughs> anyway, go fucking watch pool hopping. God damn it. <laughs> Forget Sugar talking about ragtime music she failed to emulate. What the dirty baked apple fuck is- Failed to- it, It's not ragtime, it's electro swing, and if you listen to the demo, it was more of indie rock, actually. <laughs> it's with the nude underage edifice cherub painting. Like, what? Why are you going on about this when it's in the fucking show? If you had watched the show- if you would actually fucking watch the show, Lily, you would know about this. You know... <sighs> okay, like, when do you stop talking about this goddamn fucking painting that doesn't matter to anything in the plot? By putting it there, because I would love to hear it. And then we have another musical number that out of all of them is technically the best, entirely because it uses the main theme as a leitmotif, and is about the only- I mean, I swear about just as much, Jaden, but... Yeah, Lily kind of swears at unnecessary times. Like, I swear to give emphasis. Emphasis. Empath- Because I can't talk normal good. Like, I'm- I, I know smart words, but they can't come out of my mouth well. <laughs> the instance of a leitmotif in the entire show, because all the character themes, and most of the music, actually, now that I think about it, are mostly just kind of discordant dance club beats. I mean, most of this song's instrumentals are just that, but occasionally a melody will creep through and that- Okay, you don't like EDM- fine, but the digital music fits Steven Universe very well because of the alien nature of the gems. Like, the diamond themes just being kind of these eerie tones and not much more is very effective to me. Steven Universe has very good sound design. Maybe it's just, to someone like me, like, I can't play instruments, I can't write music, I can't even read music anymore, I used to be able to. Uh, that, that skill has kind of atrophied uh, but I have very good tonal memory and I can sing. And I find the tones of Steven Universe very pleasing, I suppose I should say. You know? But I've always liked eerie electronica. I've always liked turntables and backwards noises. I've always found stuff like that to be kind of almost ethereal sounding. Because you can't make those sounds in nature. You can only make those sounds fucking with an audio track. You know, they're they're metaphysical. They don't actually exist. You're hearing something intangible. You know? <laughs> I love that sort of shit that much. Yeah, oh, Steven is a, is, a, is a cherub in a painting that Vidalia did that's in the background as a callback to the fucking show. Let's... Let's go on about it for, like, two minutes and act like Rebecca Sugar is a pedophile somehow again because reasons. Also, keep in mind, this person allegedly, and I feel has been quite provably demonstrated, wrote a fucking My Little Pony fanfic about child grooming and molestation. Uh, yeah, so just, uh, just to say in there, Lily, uh, you know... Kind of the pot calling the kettle black in this situation, you know? <laughs> that makes it worthy of a fucking prize. Because that's pretty much it's Steven Universe like discourse in a nutshell, isn't it? I mean, the show discovers something ordinary people figured out decades ago, and we applaud it for overcoming its disadvantages. Side note, I love how Steven is just too lazy to walk one kilometer, and so he decides to just teleport to the big donut through Lars's head. It's part of the song. Also, you haven't even talked about the plot yet. You're just... Like, you're just nitpicking. So, this is already pretty bad faith right from the get-go. I mean, what else did I fucking expect? Can you imagine having to be this kid's taxi service? Just wait until I get have to get into the themes. Like, what fresh hell is that? I Lars feel bad for it. Lars for the first no. time ever. Steven wants to stay blissful <laughs> and complacent for- I feel bad for Lars for the first time ever. Okay, Lily, I give you one point. I give you one point for a joke. <laughs> Let's see if I need to take it away later. But hey, God, I'm gonna grab some more water, because goddamn, I'm already dying.
Yeah, Stockholm, that's what it's called. And I think, I, I watched a video a while back, I think it's someone proven that Lily did write it. Or at least co-wrote it with somebody else. And it's like... <clears throat> you know, you run into this a lot, though. There's this dude named Rev Says Desu, who's kind of a trolly YouTuber who I watch sometimes. And he has a, he has a catchphrase of, Your likes are public, because you run into this on Twitter all the time. There's always somebody out there... Trying to accuse somebody else of, like, pedophilia, and then you go to their likes, and they have, like, literal lollycon in their likes. I have personally run into this, like, three times. There was a dude who was trying to accuse Cougar of, of making videos to appeal to kids and sexualizing teenagers, and me and somebody else went through their likes and were just dying of laughter because they literally had, like, porn of, like... Jenny the Teenage Robot and shit. You know, it's in the title that she's a teenage robot there, pal. You know? <laughs> so, this seems to happen a lot. Where somebody who is, you know, protesting a bit too much and projecting accusations onto other people actually does the thing themselves. And we kind of saw Lily do that already last time with the whole this show is racist because of this very racist interpretation I just pulled out of my ass and smeared onto the scene. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so just, uh, I'm just putting that out there. You know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be this mean if I didn't know Lily has some shit, you know, floating around there on the internet. <laughs> Forever. And that's when it's time for the plot to come smashing in like the Kool-Aid man. Hey! Universe. Come on, it's a great entrance. I love when people are like, how 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 did Garnet not predict this? And I'm like, how the fuck was Garnet supposed to predict that a killer clown from outer space was just gonna suddenly show up and try to murder everybody? <laughs> it's fantastic. Bravo, sugar. Bravo. <laughs> um, yes. Damn it, Steven, I told you not to rant about woke culture on Twitter, you doomed us all! The new gem is this sharp, edgy, Sonic the Hedgehog-looking motherfucker who behaves like the Horde's champion encountering- She don't fucking look like Sonic the Hedgehog, she looks like Knights. She looks like Knights! Damn it, that's why I like- I don't think she was purposely made to look like Knights, though. She- uh, early- a lot of early designs had a lot of Sonic references. Uh, I blame Ian for all of those, I'm sure it was him. Motherfucker wore, like, actual Sonic sneakers- to the Sonic movie premiere. What a fucking nerd. <laughs> In Athanos for the first time after the war. She took you with her. Isn't that just swell? Fucking hell, Lily. You reached hard to make that work. Yeah, I know. I'm proud of myself. Anyway, Spinel starts what? ranting and raving about how much she hates Steven and Pink Diamond and then launches into a song about how much she's jealous about all the other characters. A song where everyone just forgets how to fight while she's progressively losing her mind. Garnet makes a half-hearted attempt to hit her and misses. Pearl does nothing and gets flicked. Amethyst just lets herself get hair wedgied, I think. Then she swings around the lighthouse. And oh, oh, that's a bad shot. That's a bad shot? That's a bad shot? You have any idea how complicated that shot is? Both her and the fucking water tower move. It's good. Let's, uh, let's go watch that in slow motion, kids. We're gonna have to hear Lily's stupid voice in the background, but let's... Hair wedgie. <laughs> Look, it sounds kind of funny. Then she swings So watch this fucking the shot. Lighthouse. The lighthouse oh. is also animated. Oh. That. that is a complicated shot. And guess who animated it, Lily? Takafumi fucking Hori animated that, Lily. You know, the guy you said was awesome and Steven Universe just had to call in to try to make themselves look good. You know, that guy who's actually a fan of the fucking show. And was delighted to be doing work for it, you know? Because you don't do any research ever, you just run your fucking mouth and don't expect anyone to correct you because none of your fans will because they don't know any better and you delete negative comments, I've heard. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that isn't, that isn't a 3D object. The tower isn't, or the lighthouse isn't a 3D object here. Fumi just drew it. I think I've I think I've also seen it on the uh, the pencil the pencil version, because a lot of a lot of animators, especially in Asia, still animate on paper, which I was surprised to find out. Like I was I was surprised that most of Steven Universe was apparently animated on paper. Uh, Sugar was showing that off recently. I 
All this time, I would have sworn it was digital, so, hey. <laughs> That's a bad shot. You made your animators work overtime writing the story again, didn't you? Then spin- Takafumi Hori animated this entire sequence on his own. You dumbass. You would know that if you did any fucking research about the fucking movie. All you had to do was watch the behind the scenes. It's right there. <laughs> it's right there. Not hard to find. <laughs> Spinel pulls out her weapon, and oh, okay, I see where this is going. She's got this old cartoon thing going on. I mean, she doesn't do it very well, but, well, I mean, it's Crooniverse. So she's like an old cartoon, so she's gonna pull out, like, this big comedy mallet, or, a, like, a hand on a spring, isn't she? And it, that would be cool. It, you know, that would be cool to see in action. Generic say. anime scythe <laughs> works too, I guess. It is a generic anime scythe. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna make any bones about that because they said that the way they decided for it to be a scythe is someone just called it out in a meeting and they went, Yes! Let's do it! But you know, the thing is, it's not her weapon. The these are pieces of technology made by Homeworld, so it's not like this is her special gem weapon. I don't think she even has one. Why the fuck would she even need one? She has this thing because it's a one hit kill you know, cheap-ass DLC item that she's gonna be a brat and ruin everybody's fucking- <laughs> fucking kill ratio with. <laughs> you know? Or whatever. <laughs> I don't- I don't know COD either. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even gonna blame the movie for that. That was on me. I expected too much. At this point, Steven's finally had enough- No, that was on you for not realizing how fucking cool it is, you know? Bitch. <laughs> Sometimes things can just be there to be cool, you know? And it's fine. You, not every- like, you, you hate symbolism, you hate metaphors, but you also hate when things are just style over substance. What do you want out of entertainment, Lily Orchard? <laughs> I don't understand. It seems all you want is, like, boring fucking coffee shop AU starring your own self-inserts, which, f fine, go make those, but no one else is gonna want to watch them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know the injector and rejuvenator belong to Pink, but that was stated- Outside of the movie. Where the injector and the and, and, and rejuvenator come from is never explained in the fucking movie itself. Because the movie just doesn't have time for it. Which is fine. Because they don't really matter. They're just MacGuffins, really. Hi, Skrill. I haven't gotten too angry yet. I got more angry at Lily Orchard giving us a preview of an unfunny Pokemon Let's Play uh, than anything else so far. But I do have a little Super Saiyan on... On... <laughs> on... <laughs> On the ready. <laughs> I haven't even finished coloring the children yet. I'm so behind because I've just been fucking yelling at Lily fucking Orchard. Mm. I need more ice water. Jesus Christ. Mm. I am having fun though because you all, guys, come on, look, listen, I like to complain. I mean, I'm sure that's pretty fucking obvious that I like to complain. <laughs> I like to rant. I like to yell at things. It's fun for me. <laughs> We're, all, we're still all just having good fun here. I might be a little meaner to Lily than I would be to other people, because Lily is kind of a piece of shit, provably. <laughs> so, and I'm not that invested in the lore of uh, the lol cowdom of Lily Orchard, really. But <clears throat> I know me Steven Universe, and I know me revolutionary girl fucking Utena. Luckily, I don't think Lily covers anything else I watch. Like, does Lily have a BoJack Horseman video I can get angry at, or is that too grown up for Lily to watch? <laughs> and pulls out a shield. Really, really late on the draw there. But she's pretty powerful. You better have another Mary Sue power to pull out of your ass. She cuts through his shield like a hot knife through butter, and I get... Well, fucking, fucking... Spinel's the one with the Mary Sue powers here because she's got her one-hit kill fuck you weapon. Well, okay, look, listen, a MacGuffin... A MacGuffin is an object in a story that gets the plot going, but it doesn't matter what the object itself is. You know, their memories could have gotten reset by anything. You know, you could have made it anything. Just like the injector being a ticking time bomb could have literally just been anything. If if an object gets the plot going but is itself kind of replaceable and the story wouldn't change, that's a MacGuffin. It's not always a bad thing, you know? I mean I call I call all the 
I call all the early gem artifacts MacGuffins, because they literally are. They're just the thing to get to make the plot go, you know? And then they're never mentioned again. <laughs> I don't think it would bring Pink back. I don't. Um, uh, honestly, that would undermine the entire fucking show if it did. But the, the basically the gem is Stevens now. I believe. Um, it's like it's like uh, it's like Rose basically reformatted the hard drive of her gem to be now be Stevens. So there's still like some residual data of her, you know, which is why he sees some of her memories, but. She's gone. Yeah, exactly. She's gone! She's gone! Anyway, so... Uh, let's... Let's continue. <laughs> Guess he really can't be destabilized, can he? It's a good job, Steven. You did have one. Well, yeah, he can't be destabilized because he's fucking flesh and bone boy. He... <laughs> He can't be poofed because, uh, well, I mean, if you go read Spud's, uh, Spud in a Cup's as you gone wrong, I guess we wouldn't know what would happen if the rejuvenator could actually hurt him. But yeah, he can't, of course he can't poof. He's, he's got flesh and bone. <laughs> then they get into a tug of war and then he takes her scythe and cuts her in half. But it turns out Spinel can't be bubbled because she did something to his gem. Well, time to get the hammer, Steven. No, he just takes him inside and stares at them. Weak sauce. And then Greg... Okay, so we're back to Stephen should commit murder, and then- But then last time you made fun of the fact that Stephen committed murder, like- Like, make up your fucking mind! Do you want to see Stephen commit murder or not? That was the whole point of Fragments, too! Well, beyond this, like, you know, its point in the story is this is- This is Stephen's, like, final- Final, uh, mistake, basically. Going to Jasper for advice. Deadly mistake, at least for her it was. <laughs> but- <laughs> Like, like last time Lily was like showing footage of Steven being like, no, shattering's wrong and we can't fight. And then, and then showed footage of him shattering Jasper. But it's like, okay, so make up your fucking mind, Lily. <laughs> Burst in and sums up the last five seasons of the show. Who? No idea. Why? No idea. How? I just have no idea what's going on. Well, son. Now you know how I feel almost all the time. <laughs> Pearl you, tries Greg. to regenerate, but she's Greg in is the and it looks like Pearl's been factory reset to her original settings. And then she is yes. erroneously under the assumption that Greg is her new owner and sings a song about him. So welcome, welcome to, to your, your new curve. Turns it's out a, all the- Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, Lily. It's not a fa like- the movie goes out of its way to not do the stereotypical thing, because what would the stereotypical thing be? in, like, a sitcom or something. The stereotypical thing would be for Greg to be like, oh, ha ha, I can now make Pearl do whatever I want. I'm going to make her do my laundry and clean my house and, you know, do embarrassing things to get back at her. But instead, no, the whole time, Greg is chasing her around, telling her not to wait on him because it makes him really uncomfortable. <laughs> and that is far more in character for, for Greg. So, like... It completely subverts the, oh, hey, I'm gonna make this brainwashed character my maid trope. But Lily is trying to say it is that. It is probably not gonna show any footage that contradicts that, you know, to keep up that narrative. <laughs> I think the funniest part about him going to Jasper advice is that Jasper actually gave him uh, one that was the most helpful. But with every as with everything with Jasper, they just went too far. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, Jasper, what did you expect to fucking happen when you taught Steven your, your might makes right? But the thing is, though, the whole thing about that, too, is after Steven shatters her, Jasper's basically thinking, okay, good, now we're on the same page. Now he's worthy of being my diamond, and I will obey him like he wanted me to. And this is what we both wanted, right? And Steven's just like, no, you, you dumb dimbo. <laughs> Oh, Jasper. She has her own special logic about things. <laughs> the gems have been hetconned back to the start of their character arc. You know, a simpler time when space fascism was just an implication, Pearl was an anime trope, and the artist hadn't quite figured out how to draw a resting facial expression. Then Spinel comes back, and okay. she's gone from being a cross between Jenny Wakeman, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Sylvanas Windrunner to just being Minnie Mouse if she were a Pokemon. She's been factory reset as well, which means there was nobody to tell them what kind of load the big space penis is shooting into the Earth. Steven eventually realized... You know, why do you have to make this- you you started as trying to accuse Rebecca Sugar of being a pedophile because of a painting of Stephen as a cherub that Vidalia did. 
And now you like you keep making these weirdly sexual comments about everything. Like saying like three famous wonderful female singers are singing with their entire pussies earlier. Like you are the one making these strange sexual comments for absolutely no reason, completely out of pocket, Lily. Again, I think you might I think you might be uh projecting onto the wall or projecting onto a big picture of Rebecca Sugar's face all of your own problems. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm just you know, I'm not a therapist. Please, please do not consider this please do not consider anything I say therapy. That would be a grave mistake on your part, but <laughs> I am recommending you go to a therapist. <laughs> says that Bismuth, Lapis, and Peridot are still unharmed and can still help, but they don't really yeah. know much about it either. Here she is, my new best friend, Spinel. A pleasure to meet you all. Noodle daughter. I thought you said she was just trying to kill you. Oh, Bismuth, that was a whole 12 seconds ago. We gotta stop dwelling in the past. Bismuth explains that the weapon- That is- Lily! That is the exact joke they all make there that you just skipped over, Lily. That is the exact joke they just made there. <clears throat> Paradox says, it took me months to stop trying to kill Steven. And Bismuth says, eh, it took me like a day, day and a half. And then Lapis says, I still haven't made up my mind. <laughs> so, like, you made the same joke the movie just made, but you hid that the movie already lampshaded it and made that joke. So you can pretend that the movie is unaware that that's a funny thing looking back. You know, that the show was poking fun at itself. You, you had to cut that out so you could pretend that the show isn't self-aware, because it absolutely fucking is. <laughs> oh, we gotta stop dwelling. Now I want Sylvanas written like Spinel. I don't even know who Sylvanas is. This is someone Lily mentions a lot. I don't give a fuck about World of Warcraft lore. I don't give a fuck about MMOs in general. I just, I cannot care about them. <laughs> I've tried, I've tried. At most I'll play an MMO for like three months and then I get bored. So, and, yeah, Lapis is definitely, de Lapis is like coded goth, moody goth girl. That's why so many people simp for her. This is my theory. <laughs> She's moody goth girl coded. <laughs> in the past, Bismuth explains that the weapons used to reset gems to being back to how they made them. Homeworld used them to essentially mind control gems who started- You didn't mention the Star Wars joke of Peridot looking down the, uh, the barrel of the fucking rejuvenator while she tries to figure out what it is. <laughs> ...having silly ideas about free will and sex, so all their characters- I don't know anything about fucking Warcraft. Also, what did you just say? Fuck. Why do you keep making sex jokes? It's so weird. Them ...to essentially mind control gems who started having silly ideas about free will and sex. So all their character okay. development- Okay, okay, that was a little funny. <laughs> ...has been wound back to zero. Except for Steven, who was already there. Steven starts to realize that his powers are reset. Everyone's- You have a point and a half now, Lily. That is the, that's the most you've gotten out of me so far. <laughs> ...trouble and nobody knows what to do. And then he looks at Ruby and Sapphire and laments that he wishes Garnet were here. And to my surprise, they actually very faintly play the melody to Stronger Than You in the background, which is about the second time- How is that to your surprise? That's their light motif. The show does this all the time, you just didn't notice! Time ...they've done this in the entire series. I was- I was- The only time- No! No! You hear the Stronger Than You riff with Garnet all the fucking time! It's like her theme song! You're stupid, Lily! You're stupid! You're basic! <laughs> Quite surprised here. That was a good musical thing you did, Kroonerberg. You get it thicker. Then Steven sings a Linkin Park song, and the entire time this is going on, Sapphire's just stand- Steven? That's mostly Bismuth's song, stupid. Why did you skip that? That- That, that Uzo, Uzo Aduba gets a song because she is a Broadway singer, you know? <laughs> there staring off into space while Ruby <clears throat> do steps around her fucking queens. They decide the best way to get them to refuse is liberal applications of violence. Geez, Steven, where the fuck was that when Rudolph S almost crushed your damn skull? He can't go through with it, but then Spinel picks up the edgy pizza cutter and jackhammers her way across the land. The entire time this is going on. Okay, you know what? The, I have a funny thing to note. The first time I watched the movie and that happened, I I said to myself, I said, is she fucking with them? Does Spinel actually remember and she's fucking with them? <laughs> Honestly, I think that would have been pretty funny too, but nah. <laughs> Sapphire's predicting everything, Ruby's gushing about how cool she is, and Sapphire's <laughs> blushing like a gay idiot. This is something Steven Universe always gets right, when Ruby and- Well, I mean, yeah, Ruby and Sapphire, whenever they're apart and not guarded, are both a couple of gay idiots with one brain cell between them, and it's, it's, it's wonderful. 
Sapphire are on screen, the story grinds to a halt for quality sapphic nonsense. An anvil drops on Ruby's head and Sapphire pushes her out of the way, causing them I to I mean, it didn't grind to a halt. The whole point of this was that they will become Garnet again. You know, that there was a purpose to this. Stupid. ...who's <laughs> back into Garnet, and they fall in love at first sight. Unfortunately, it's not even halfway through the- They didn't fall in love at first sight, they remembered their love for each other, but it wasn't enough to bring back their full memories, because they only just became Garnet again, so now Garnet also needs her memories. How are you not getting this? It's not that... difficult. <laughs> The whole point of this is, like, their, their their memories are in there. They just have to get them, you know, they just have to bring them back to the surface. Get them to, I don't know, get get the folders out of the recycle bin, I guess. I don't know, whatever the fuck is going on inside the gems, data-wise. <laughs> the movie yet, so Steven's hasty solution turns out not to work. Garnet doesn't remember jack shit, and it looks like her entire brain's fallen out as well. What, what's going on? It looks like she's doing a pretty good job. The whole... Uh, the whole joke is... Cotton Candy Garnet asks nothing but questions, whereas normal Garnet never asks questions. That's just, it's just a, it's just a little writing callback, man. And, and Cotton Candy Garnet's just cute. She's just cute. Look at her. She's so cute. <laughs> I'm watching herself. Why are you fighting? Aren't we all friends? Oh, what's this? Garnet, don't, don't touch that! How is that also a fetish? Like... You don't know how to use this joke. You just don't know how to use this joke. Like, ne none of your uses of it have been funny or even make any fucking sense. How is Garnet being baby a fetish? Do you have a fetish for that, Lily? Or, I mean, I'm just saying, you know how I was just saying earlier about people accusing other people of things they do themselves? Like, do you have a fetish for somebody being lobotomized and acting baby? I mean, I would be very concerned if you do. <laughs> And then Greg shows up with his J.C. Payne looking <laughs> Gardevoir and tells great. Stephen that Amethyst Shut is up. missing. Benel wants to come too, but Stephen wants her to stay there. But then she has a little bit of a golem moment. You stay here with the others, yes, you and do. I'll be right back. Yo! Okay, she's faking it. Got it. They find Amethyst and Vidal. She isn't faking it. She literally doesn't remember. But her, it's it, it, it's the show that her memories are just under the surface. They're just under the surface, ready to pop back out, and Steven would prefer to restore the memories of his friends before that happens, you know? So, Spinel's just not exactly fucking stable. Johnny Walker Black, man, you... you <laughs> you're more miserable about this than I am, Glacier. Actually, the words my, uh... I think a little weed might be in order. Alia's weird garage of paintings of her. If you didn't see the early... Se yeah! Vidalia, yeah, Vidalia's weird paintings of Amethyst. You like the painting that was in Steven's room that she did? How are you not putting two and two together here, pal? It had, like, this weird romantic tension the show never did anything with. Time is fucked with people's brains, but the early seasons of Steven Universe were actually pretty good. But over time, a lot of the good writers and animators left over creative differences with the showrunner. Then they sing a... That's completely untrue. It's been mostly the same team the entire show. You just, you just pulled that directly from your anus, Lily. Just like most of your other opinions. Like, hello, thank you. Thank you, Arsonist Kitten, for for following me on, on talking about Lily Orchard. Pulling things out of their ass. You know, just just black tar coming right out your anus. <laughs> like, who left because of creative differences with Rebecca Sugar? You're just fucking making that up. Yeah. So now Lily's saying that Amethyst and Vidalia have a have romantic tension, which I don't really think they do. I think they're just they're just buddies, they're just friends, you know. And obviously Vidalia is known for doing weird paintings. Hey, good timing, Arson is Kitten. Welcome. I am reacting to Lily Orchard being terrible about Steven Universe. Which I tried to do last week with the movie- the movie, yeah. The video was mostly about fucking revolutionary girl Utena, and how Lily Orca doesn't understand that either. <laughs> so, hooray! Um, right now we're watching a video on the movie, and so far, like, Lily has barely covered the plot, and is just saying weird things about stuff being a fetish, and accusing Lily Orca of being a pedophile because of the- the painting that Vidalia did of- Steven and Garnet from pool hopping, which Lily evidently has not seen, because in the last video we saw, Lily claimed that they never bring up Garnet, um, having anxiety about being the leader ever again. 
That's what Lily claims. Because Lily Orchid has not seen pool hopping, where this, this where this fucking happens, where the painting is from. The painting that Lily went on about for like two fucking minutes trying to imply Rebecca Sugar is a pedophile. Yeah. Yeah. This is exhausting. <laughs> a song and speed run an entire show's worth of character development, casually forgetting the point where they It's just it's just like a, a cute little victory lap for the show and also a, a, a summary for newcomers to the series of what these, how far these characters have come, which is fine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I thought you liked goofy little light, slice of life shit, you know, and then you complain about it. Like the show can do nothing right in your eyes. They just hard reset Amethyst's entire character and started from scratch, but don't worry about it. Then they rush back to the space penis to find that it's making the land turn all. Why do you keep calling it a space penis? Injectors obviously look like fucking viruses. They're viruses. The whole that's the whole like injectors look like viruses. The gem empire is structured like an insect colony. They're supposed to be very very inhuman seeming things. I mean, when we need to make aliens, that's what we usually turn to is like insects and 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 microscopic things and and like deep sea life because it's just so alien to us you know uh, anyway wibbly wobbly and we get an actually funny line damn this get away from me i can't stand to see you all vacant and bereft of personality yo i'm back you dip you know michaela dice just gives, gives the best dry wit turn dice did you just pronounce her last name dice it's deets this is like you not being able to pronounce utana <laughs> What is like okay look I can't talk half the time like I trip over my own goddamn tongue a lot but come on it's deets deets I'm pretty sure that is that is a legit funny line uh yeah. turns out the space penis is coming poison that will destroy well you stop like again Lily is the one getting weirdly sexual about everything in this movie for no apparent reason. WHILE TRYING TO ACCUSE REBECCA SUGAR OF BEING A SEX PEST! Like... Uh, I know, I know. That's a, that, see, that's the thing about me, is I am at my best unscripted for some reason. I- If I am just prompted and kept on topic, I can- I can talk very- in a very articulate manner about things. But if I have to sit down and actually plan a script, or plan a lesson, or plan how to talk about things, I can't really do it. So I'm really at my best off the cuff, so that's why you're mostly just gonna get, like, stream videos of me being a giggly little idiot. I at least cut out- when I- when I did the Utana cut for YouTube, I at least cut out most of my ums and ahs and weird noises and giggling and <laughs> bullshit, you know? That's what I'm always like. Oh, uh, no, uh, Arson is Kitten, I think Lily Orchid just still thinks it's, like, 2012 or 2013, and- like, the angry reviewer sex joke, like, format is still popular. When even Doug fucking Walker has stopped doing that, so, like, you know, I'm just, I'm just All saying. All organic life on Earth. Steven tries to lift it out, but it's not the end of the movie yet, so his Mary Sue powers won't work. Spinel's the only one who can get the space penis to pull out, but they don't know how to system restore her back to before she was reset. Except Pearl. Pearl might, but she's still busy doing orientation play with Greg, so that's a problem. Turns out the key to fixing Pearl is that they need to recreate what happened between okay. her and Ping Diamond, but with Greg instead. Yeah, this is a cat. No, why do you always call Rose Pink Diamond? Though, like, <laughs> are you just mad that she was Pink Diamond? Because that was a confusing sentence. You know, because they're not replicating what happened between Pearl and Pink Diamond. They are replicating what happened between Pearl and Rose Quartz. Which I know, Rose Quartz and Pink Diamond are the same person. But, like, Pink and Rose kind of, kind of are, like, different parts of Rose's overall life. Like, you know, there's, like, before Pink after Pink, you know, before Pink after Rose, basically. Your life can be very much split into two like that, um, I think. <laughs> Dang, I can't believe Lily is dead naming Rose. <laughs> yeah, wow, Lily, wow. <laughs> I mean, I will, I will interchangeably call her Rose and Pink, but I usually call her Pink when I'm referring to her actions in the past. 
in the far past, and I call her Rose when I'm talking about her actions as Rose Quartz. You know, it just, to me, that makes more sense, because it, it gives people an idea of which time period you're talking about as well. Because if I said, well, Rose Quartz, Rose Quartz injured Pink Pearl while yelling at White Diamond that she wants a colony, that kind of makes a little less sense than saying it was Pink Diamond, doesn't it? You know? I know, that's just my logic for it. <laughs> Casual reminder, uh, Pearl is gay. I feel someone writing the movie forgot that at some point. It's okay, it's crooner. They... Bruh! They're not trying to make this romantic. They were just trying to make Greg dis... Like, no, like, in this part even, they were... Tr Hold on a second. Wait a minute. They were this isn't even the part where they try to make Greg disappear, right? This is the part where... They ask Greg if it's okay for Amethyst to shapeshift into Rose to try to jog Pearl's memory, which is pretty gay. <laughs> so first, they get a gold star if they manage to tie their shoes by themselves, but it turns out that trying to recreate this doesn't seem to be working, so Amethyst pulls a drastic move and shapeshifts into Stella Kubler, but that's- Well, it, but that was their first try. Nobody tries to make- Pearl be romantic with Greg, you're just lying. You're just misleading your audience on purpose at this point. Like, th there, like this isn't even a mistake you could make. This isn't even a misunderstanding about the scene you could have. You're just making this up. Like, whole cloth. Just to make the movie look bad. So, fuck you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not taking any of this shit seriously. Yeah, so first first they try to have Amethyst shapeshift into Rose, and they ask Greg if he's okay with it, because, you know, Amethyst kind of traumatized Greg by shapeshifting into Rose to, like, you know, torment him because she was upset that they didn't have a close relationship anymore, and they possibly had a fling of some kind after Rose was gone. If you, if you read that subtext into, um, into, uh, Maximum Capacity... I couldn't remember the name of the episode for a second there. I will flog myself as a terrible fan. Uh. <laughs> that still doesn't work, and she just keeps staring at Greg. Okay, uh, I've been doing the conversion jokes for a little bit now, but honestly, it's a little creepy that they've gone with this bit for this fucking long. Uh, and I... She's not treating him romantically at all. She's just being a Pearl. She is being a assistant Siri maid. Because that's what fucking pearls are, bro. Like, come on. <laughs> I'm officially out of jokes, so please end this. But then Steven has an idea. Pearl's big moment of character development came after Rose committed suicide. So all he has to do is take Greg out of existence by- mm, Rose didn't commit suicide. I said this last time, I think, but my theory of it is that Rose Quartz wished to in some way become part of the life cycle of the Earth. It doesn't make much sense to us, but perhaps to an immortal being, the idea of passing away and having your components become part of new life appealed to her. You know, again, we might not understand that from an immortal space god's fucking perspective, but to her that might have been a appealing concept to, you know, become a, become part of the overall life cycle of the Earth. That is my... My, uh... B -b 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 also, I just realized I'm kind of doing this lighting wrong. <laughs> that is my interpretation of uh, why Rose made Steven. And I think it is supposed to be up to interpretation. They're never going to fully explain it. Because we can never know what Rose's true motives were. Because we shouldn't. Um, because Steven is never going to know. And uh, Steven can only know Rose through other people. He'll never know exactly what she was thinking or what her motives were. Because she's gone. And, like, any kid who grows up with a dead parent who they can only hear about is gonna have that same feeling. They're never gonna truly know that person. They're only gonna know them secondhand. So, to that effect, we as the audience can only know Rose secondhand as well. Because we're Steven's the POV character, like it or not. By capping him in the head, I mean fusing with him. Now, there- Okay, a lot of people made that joke, though, that, like, they were just gonna- They were just gonna fucking murk Greg. <laughs> to bring Pearl's memories back. Sorry, Dad! It's you or the entire world! Boom! You know? Yeah, sure, a lot of fans made that joke, too, but, like, you're not original. <laughs> There's concept art out there of a Steven- Oh, P yeah, Pink is also Steven's- Steven's mom. Obviously, yeah, because, like I said, Pink- 
Pink Diamond and Rose Quartz are the same person, but you can cleanly split her life into Pink and Rose, uh, you know, pretty well when you're when you're talking about her lifetime and her actions. In Greg Fusion, where he's this kind of grungy dad rock guy with a like, I don't like that design to tell you the truth. I'm glad they went with the one they went with. A spiked mo. Let me guess, Lily is gonna say it's like sexual and a fetish and some bullshit, right? Yeah, probably. Block that's <sighs> actually one of the coolest of Steven's fusion designs. Kind of reminds me of my dad, the rock star. Now that I think about. It. What the fuck is this Canadian-looking bullshit right here? What is that? What the fuck obscure ass cartoon are you referencing now? Is this like? An animated version of like the Oz the Osmonds. <laughs> what is fuck? What is fucking this? What is even fucking this? <laughs> You're a confusing creature, Lily Orchard. Got it. But in the end, they didn't go with that. Uh, they decided instead to go they with the single most boring fucking design they've ever thought of. Instead, they went with a grungy rock star. It's the same fucking thing. The hair is just different. Stupid. The hair is a reference to two two different episodes of, of Steven Universe, too. Uh, the, the, uh, what do you call that? Pompadour. The Pompadour is a reference to Steven and the Stevens. And, like, the hair and the muscles and everything is reference to, uh, Steven's guitar dad drawing. So, yeah, obviously, Steven and Greg are gonna make, like, an 80s rock star. That makes perfect fucking sense. <laughs> of course they are. Why would they not do that? Like, the first time I saw the fucking movie, I saw this, and I just started cracking up. Because I said, oh, of course, of course this is what these two idiots would make together. Of course! <laughs> Let's see, what's Skrull saying? I like to believe that Rose realized that she will not be there with her son when uh, he starts existing, like, way too late. I don't know. I think she, I think Rose planned for that the entire time. I think she wanted her gem to become part of a human. Because she was a human, boo. She really wanted to be human. <laughs> but she can't, because she's a gem. <laughs> so. And of course, throughout the show, the question was, is Steven a new person, or is he like a reincarnation of Rose? That was always the question up until the very end. So, you know, that's kind of important. Like, like Steven's whole identity revolved around his mother for, like, the earliest parts of his life. And that's why he doesn't know what the fuck to do with himself in the future. That's the, that's the whole point. <laughs> uh, let's see. Arguably, Greg needed to be there because he is the only other person who knows what Pearl needed. And Pearl didn't need Rose. She needed a rebellion. Oh, yeah. The, that Yeah, and Greg is a rebellious person. That makes that does make a lot of sense, uh, Arsonist Kitten. I, haven't actually, I hadn't actually even thought of it that way. So I figured just Greg has to be in the movie because he's Greg and he's great and he has to be in the movie because why would you have the movie without Greg? <laughs> that would suck. But yeah, and it was also an excuse to get, um, to get, um, Amy Mann back with her, uh, with her musical partner who is Steg's voice. So that's fun too. Apparently, apparently Sugar approached them on a cruise ship they all happened to be on and was like, Hey guys, you want to be in my movie? <laughs> And they said, yeah, <laughs> which is so cute. Like, Sugar Sugar has absolutely gone around hiring, like, musicians she likes personally. Like, absolutely. Like, she, she said she grew up with Amy Mann, who does uh, Opal's voice. So, but yeah, that was the story. She basically came up to them on a cruise ship and asked if they wanted to be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so adorable. <laughs> this thing looks like it was designed by Rob Liefeld with a hairstyle that looks like the 60s were compensating for something other than paranoia about communism. And you're Yeah, or or it's because uh Steven and the Stevens episode or it's, you know, it's because fucking um we had Pompadour Steven and Steven and the Stevens in season 1 in early season 1, you know the part of the show you said you actually like. Do you watch the things you talk about, Lily? Or do you just, like, do you have some sort of brain leak? Do you just not absorb anything you, you witness? I mean, yeah, I have kind of a freakish callback for things I really like. Like, last week, I was able to say all this shit about Shoujo Kakumi Utena off the top of my head without having even seen it in, like, a decade because it is so tattooed on my brain because I watched it so much as a kid and I have it all on DVD, 
And I actually, um, I didn't mention this last time, but I actually, if you, if you find the last Utana DVD, there was a fan art contest, and there's a particular piece of fan art that won the top slot that I can prove that I did, because I'm pretty sure I still have it on my DeviantArt account. I did sell the original a while ago at a convention, though. Like, by a while ago, I mean, like, 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm old, okay? <laughs> anyway... You remember how I said, please end this joke? Uh, yeah, they don't. What do you want to do? What do you mean? I put up with that bit for way too long. Fuck off, What do you Becky. mean? Why? Biggs was in the background. Like, she's inspired by the music, you dumbass. She's inspired by the fucking rebellious rock music, stupid. It's the power of rock. Yeah, it's really fucking corny, but... Steven Universe, what do you expect? It wasn't cute or funny, it was just creepy and weird. Even by your weeby frow angle. No, you are trying to say it was creepy and weird because you're cutting out all the ways it wasn't. You're cutting out all the ways they subverted the expected trope, but you're just trying to pretend it was the expected trope because either you weren't paying attention or you're being deliberately dishonest, which I'm more leaning toward the latter. <laughs> because you're just outright lying. Like, I have a fresher recall for this movie than I do Utena, and I know you're fucking lying. <laughs> no, I don't think Lily watched the full series. In fact, I heard rumors that Lily watched the series on, like, two times speed or something, which, yeah, that's that's a great fucking uh, way to, to, to you know, Go observe something you're gonna standards. write just, about. Just fuck off. Anyway, after they finish <laughs> Pearl, Steven's dying bleeding on the carpet, and Spinel runs off. Fuck? that about and you, you skip the whole you skip the whole opal part you skip the whole part where uh steven universe movie opal like 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 you fucking skip the whole part with opal where amethyst and and pearl fuse and you know it's it's kind of gay you skip that whole fucking part because it doesn't fit your fucking narrative about the movie Huh? Yeah? Let's see, for, let me see if I can find a like, gif of it at least. So I don't want to see the whole... Well, I guess, yeah, look, we can just watch it, watch it on a fucking video, can't we? Oh, okay, this is a compilation of Pearl and Amethyst, but here we go, I found it. Yeah, so you just, you just, you just skip this entire fucking part, Lily. <laughs> So yeah, you just hide in that part. You just fucking hide in that part because it doesn't fit your fucking narrative that, oh, Pearl, Pearl, uh, thinking she belongs to Greg was totally creepy even though the whole movie, like, deliberately subverts the expected trope. Well, if you like Opal's voice, look up Amy Mann. Uh, look up her music. I, I used to listen to her a lot when I was younger, too. Not so much anymore, but I, I understand why, uh, why, uh, I almost said Lily, Jesus Christ. Why Rebecca Sugar was into her. After getting an explanation that Spinell used to be Pink Diamond's Curlia, Steven insists on running off alone, much to the chagrin of everyone around him, because Steven has a martyr complex at this point. There's this thing in this movie and- <laughs> Steven always had a martyr complex, what are you talking about? <laughs> future after it, where Steven's insistence on diving into danger is shown to be damaging his psyche, but all that is undercut by the fact that the show has so far glorified him doing this- Well- it's also undercut because it's a 90 minute fucking movie. It doesn't have time to like, like, like reprise all the themes of the show. It's not the, the point of it, dumbass. Up until this point. Granted, I'm not 100% against this. I'm no stranger to making my writing fuck-ups look like something I meant to do this entire time. But given the fact that the show has so far centered entirely around this white boy talking down to women, people of color, and victims of tyrannical oppression... Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Also, like, what it, like, you keep calling him a white boy, but he might be Jewish? Like, he could be. Like, you don't, you don't know. Ugh, <laughs> uh, like, that's such, that's just such a bad faith way to describe the show. Like, what if I describe Pokemon as, um, a society where instead of receiving public education, children are forced to leave home and survive on the streets while they capture and fight animals for profit. What, what if I said that, Lily? Would that be fair? Would that be a fair thing to say about fucking Pokemon? Or would that be a stupid, edgy, stupid-ass fucking shit-ass thing to say? <laughs> I can't even... I can't even finish this thought. It's just... It's too ridiculous. Maybe someone else should do this. 
How about Pearl? You know, the other person Pink Diamond thoroughly abused and treated like garbage. Just a thought. Oh yeah, I jumped the gun. Spinelli used to be a playmate for Pink Diamond until Pink got bored of her and ordered her to stay there and not move a muscle while she- She didn't order her to stay there. If she had ordered Spinel to stay there, Spinel never would have been able to leave. I, I, d right off the bat with, like, the biggest misconception people have about the movie. The whole point is Spinel kept herself there. Spinel was the one hoping the relationship would resume. Spinel was the one clinging to something in the past that wasn't there anymore, but she was too afraid to move on, you know, so she was rooted in place. It's a metaphor. You know, those things we establish you don't fucking understand, Lily. <laughs> She ran off to go play with her new slave, and Pink Diamond has done some fucked up shit throughout her three identities in this show, but I think this one's the most brazenly sadistic. She leaves- Are you saying that Steven is an identity of Pink Dot- Dot- What are you, Jasper? <laughs> you have Pink Diamond's gem, therefore you are Pink Diamond. Except you're not my diamond until you murder me. <laughs> but... Uh, the, the whole point of the ending, Lily, is that Steven is not his mother. Steven is a separate person from his mother. He is not the original Pink Diamond. That that is that is the point of the end of the series. He is not Pink he is not Pink Diamond. He has the Pink Diamond gem in him, yes, but he is not Pink Diamond. He is Steven. And he has always been Steven. He has never been a reincarnation of his mother. That was the whole point of the fucking ending. He's his own person. You're dumb, and now you're about to say dumb things about Spinel's backstory, I'm sure. Leaves so many characters in nihilistic despair. She had this playmate that she treated like dog shit. She had a slave who she treated like... I guess it doesn't really matter how you treat a slave, you still have a slave. Thank you, thank you. I've been working on my Jasper impression. <laughs> still, having said that, I feel good. And of course you're just gonna call Pearl a slave to be provocative. I'm not even gonna dignify that with a response. <laughs> She started a rebellion and didn't have it stand for anything or have any teeth and got all of her loyal soldiers corrupted and- What? She got all of her subjects corrupt. She- she got them corrupted. Look what she made the diamonds do. Wow, Lily. Wow. You're literally echoing the shit yellow and blue diamonds say. Like, a hundred percent. Cause, like, remember? After the wedding, after Blue and Yellow arrive, and they realize that Steven has Pink Diamond's gem, they, like most gems, assume he's pink. Because to a gem, that just makes natural sense. You have a particular gemstone, you are that gem. They, they can't think beyond that. Why would they? It's just not part of their reality. You know? Uh, so, while still thinking he's pink, he shows them the centipedals and the corrupted gems. And Yellow literally says, Pink, you made us waste so many adequate gems. <laughs> so you are echoing the way the diamonds would scapegoat pink. They're the ones who decided to do the corruption blast. Only them. Rose never expected that to happen. And they didn't even know it was going to corrupt the gems. They thought they were basically wiping them all out. They, I, they, I assume if Pink had been part of that blast, it would have, like, made those gemstones inert or something. It would have, like, just completely wiped all, like, the data and personhood off of them. You know, that's, that's my headcanon. We don't really know what the purpose of the corruption wave was or what the diamonds thought it was going to do. Uh, it was just their way of ending the wall with, like, the nuclear option, basically. You know? So, she started the rebellion because Mommy and Mommy wouldn't listen to her about how she likes the Earth the way it is and she doesn't want to suck up all its resources and she wants to preserve it. And... To yellow and blue, they just thought, Oh, Pink, you have been begging us for this colony this whole time, and now you're flaking out on it? Finish what you started, young lady. <laughs> you know? So they wouldn't listen to her. They're just like, Oh, Pink, you're just trying to flake out again. 
So after not being able to convince them, what does she do? She takes on the form of Rose Quartz, which she had done before to explore the Earth, and says, well, guess what? I will just... And she has a very childish attitude about it, because Pink is kind of a child. I do think she emerged after the other diamonds, because she is smaller than them, like, significantly smaller than them, which means she must have stayed on the ground longer. And in real life, Pink Diamonds do, in fact, form under immense amounts of pressure and come out pretty small. So, when that happens to a gem in the show, they're like Amethyst. They come out too small, and they come out late. So, there's every possibility that Pink did come out late. And then the other diamonds didn't really know what to do with her. And the, you know, that's what led to the whole situation. She is- Pink is basically a child of a wealthy traditionalist family who has undiagnosed ADHD, and the only thing her relatives know how to do to handle it is ask her, why can't you be normal? <laughs> you know, why can't you just do things the way we have it set up for society? Why can't you just fit into this society we built without you in mind? You know, that that is the entire conflict there. And so... She decides, well, I'm gonna, I'll take on the form of Rose Quartz and I'll just scare everybody, scare everybody off the planet. Like, she was so naive, she literally thought she and Pearl could just scare everybody off the Earth, and that would be the end of that. But then it just kept escalating. Blue was on Earth to micromanage things, and that's when Garnet formed. Yellow, presumably, was also on Earth to micromanage things. I fully think Yellow is the one who made the Beta Kindergarten, because they made the Beta Kindergarten because they needed to quickly make more Quartz soldiers to fight the Rebellion. So basically, after that happened, Yellow and Blue must have swept in and said, Oh, Pink, you're making a mess of everything. Let us help you. We'll fix this for you. Ah. Oh. You know, you even have that scene that flashes back to them that I think uh, Steven has on the moon base where uh, Blue is basically telling Pink, like, oh, don't worry about these rebels. You know, we'll take care of it. You don't even have to do anything, Pink. You just have to smile and wave. It's easy, you know? But as long as you are here, this colony will be completed. And I bet that is why uh, Blue is particularly devastated by Pink's death because, you know... She says that shit to her and then she dies. Or at least, you know, but I think that really gave Pink the thought that the only way to end this war was to take herself out of the equation. She never expected the, the corruption wave to happen, and now you're victim blaming her for it. Wow, Lily. <laughs> just just fucking wow, you know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and she just up and committed suicide for the sake of this fucking kid and left all she didn't okay i already went over that earlier no, no, no. of her friends <laughs> grieving and aimless at the start of the show rose is this inspiring figure with regrets who still strikes hope in people and now here's yet another person driven to suicidal nihilistic despair at the mere men how how is spinel suicidal just because she let herself get hit with the rejuvenator i guess maybe i i don't know it was just it's just a way to they had to show us what she was like before, so that's the way to do that. It, it, God, you're dumb. God, you're so fucking dumb. And you just, you just, you just, you just interpret things in like the worst possible way you can think of. I don't think you actually even enjoy entertainment. <laughs> like seriously, Jesus Christ. Well, yeah, she can she can represent a mother who died giving birth. And like I said, I think she was, as an immortal being, the idea of becoming part of the life cycle of the Earth appealed to her in a way that mortal beings like us perhaps would not understand, you know? <sighs> and yeah, when the show started, Rose was this larger-than-life figure who was, was being portrayed as omnibenevolent and perfect and, and, and such a, such a, you know, driving force, blah, blah, blah. But of course, the people who remember her are only going to tell you the good stuff about her. You're not going to go up to an eight-year-old kid and say, Hey, guess what? Your mother made a whole lot of fuck-ups, kid. Let me tell you all about them. You know, who does that? Nobody. Maybe Lily Orchid would. Maybe Lily Orchid would go up to a kid with a dead parent and say, You know, your parent wasn't very nice. One time, they stepped on my toe, and <laughs> I decided that they were the worst person in the world forever. So, you know, your mom was a bitch kid, and now she's dead. <laughs> You're like, who would do that? Who would do that? <laughs> Except Lily Orker. Mention <laughs> of her name. Okay, you know characters like Amon or Getsis, you know, revolutionaries who clearly stand for something? I don't know who the second person is at all. Is that also Pokemon? Why does he look like he's from Gundam? <laughs> Why does he look like... What's his face from Gundam? You know who I'm talking about. 
probably somebody out there does. But the writers were just too rich or white to even dare challenge the status quo, and so they hastily backpedal into writing them as- All right, Lauka, I'll take your, uh, I'll take your word for it. I don't know what the fuck I'm even looking at right now. <laughs> Power-hungry liars. Rose is kind of like that, except it's all backstory and no point. Not even a shitty conservative point. It's, it's, there's just no point. The idea is interesting on paper, uncovering the bloody despicable legacy of your parents. I mean, Steven is basically Rolf Mengele meeting one of the children his father experimented on. But the problem is that it's being- <laughs> What? Comparison, except that you just want to make Nazi jokes again. Like, the fuck? <laughs> done by fucking Cruniverse, whose entire creative well is filled only with bad anime and racist cartoons, complete with the. Okay, I need, I need a second. I need a second to. Again, this is like a gish gallop. You, you just say so many wrong things, rapid fire, all in a row, before anyone can fucking react, and then you move on. Okay, first of all, yes, that was an Evangelion reference. Congratulations. 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 That was an Evangelion reference. You fucking recognized it. Oh my god. And... It goes on for like two seconds. And like I said before, the anime references in CV Universe are the best kind of references because even if you don't understand that it's a reference, it still makes sense in the scene. And it doesn't matter. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm just so astonished by this. And then you bring up with bad anime and racist Fantasia? You bring up Fantasia? The old 1940? Ah, ah, I hit buttons by accident. Sorry, because I'm so upset. Um, what does Fantasia have to do with any of this? Did you just want to show the racist centaur for some reason? You just wanted to show the racist centaur in Fantasia in the middle of a Steven Universe movie for no conceivable reason? Other than you just want to draw a correlation between this and Rebecca Sugar somehow? Where are you even getting- who, who, who on the crew universe ever said Fantasia is one of our main influences? Especially- esp <laughs> Especially the little darky centaur. <laughs> yeah, we were totally inspired by that. Who anywhere said that, ever? You know, this scene was censored by the 1980s, right? By the time I saw Fantasia as a kid, and I'm 40, this was already censored. And Rebecca Sugar's younger than me, so she probably never would have seen the original version either. So what are you talking about? Why did you just... Why did you just want to show the little pickaninny centaur? You... Why did you just want to show racist iconography in the middle of your fucking Steven Universe video? Why is this here, Lily? Just for shock value? Because you still think it's 2013? And you think this is how YouTube works still? I am so confused. I'm barely getting any work done. <laughs> I'm just a react streamer now, apparently. Hopefully some of you are enjoying getting a sneak peek at the next pages anyway. But, um... Yeah, Rebecca Sugar is Jewish. And she's married to a black guy. Who she was with for like 12 years before that. You know, Ian Jones Cordy, the goat, you know, he made OK KO. he was in Bravest Warriors, he's really funny on Twitter, <laughs> that guy, you know, him, they're married, actually his, his tweet when they got married, it, it was such a Steven line, because he went, we just got married to each other. <laughs> I was like, God damn it! That sounds like something Steven would say. <laughs> this cartoons complete with the most amateur hour attempt at a musical because Sugar is absolutely. Oh my familiar. fucking Christ! Half the characters are voiced by very expensive, very busy singers. Out of okay, yeah, we already went fucking over. But the actual songwriting is handled by Sugar herself and a pair of electronica artists with poor equipment. 
You talking about Avivi and Shirashu? Why are you just insulting them for no reason? Okay, I get it. You don't like EDM, Lily, but that doesn't mean it's, like, objectively bad music. You just... You just don't understand or enjoy anything. <laughs> ...to not giving it a rest with that shit. So we've got this mixture of, ooh, well, everyone deserves a second chance, kindergarten rhetoric, smacked right next to the suicidal despair of a person who was treated like a disposable object by an actual monster and is coming to terms with the fact that it was never loved. And after all of that, that tear- But you're calling her an it this whole time. You're calling her an it for some reason while you say this. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying, oh, poor Spinel, she was de it was dehumanized. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> well, Lily said Evangelion is bad anime, which, I mean, I might be inclined to agree because I kind of hate Ava, but I also understand that Ava is a very important, influential work that basically shaped the landscape of anime today. So, you know, I can't exactly say it's bad. I just personally don't like it. <laughs> Ear-ending confession of all the pain Spinel has endured. The next words out of Steven's mouth are, I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. I have never more wanted to grab- You didn't actually show his line, though. You just- you, you showed a fry meme instead. Or Steven just goes, I can't believe Mom did that to you. Well, actually, yeah, I can't. It's a funny line. Fuck you. <laughs> Grab this fucking franchise by its neck and yell, Figure out your fucking tone. Are you a show for babies about forgiveness or are you a show for teenagers about abuse and suicidal despair? Pick. The show is not about abuse and suicidal despair. You were just saying these things. Like, the show is about how most problems come down to lack of communication, which I guess because you can barely communicate any ideas clearly or coherently, Lily, you would not understand, <laughs> I suppose. Like, every conflict in Steven Universe comes down to, like, a lack of communication and people having opposing goals and emphasis on understanding that that is the- that is what causes most conflict. And the gem stuff is, like, metaphors for more mundane problems. Like, like Spinel's whole backstory. Like, you're taking it so literally. You're like, she's a slave who was ordered to stay in place and was abandoned. No. Spinel's backstory is about that little tag-along younger kid you ditched when you were, like, 13. You know, because you were too grown up for them. It's about the toys you threw away because you were too grown up for them. And it's about someone... So desperately wanting a relationship to exist that doesn't exist anymore. Like, they want to believe they're still friends with this person, even though this person has ghosted them, you know, and they're just clinging on to the idea that that person still ex still exists in their life when they don't. And, like, literally, Pink does not exist in her life anymore because Pink is gone, you know? <laughs> so, but she has been standing there this entire time because if she just makes Pink happy, maybe Pink will like her again. But the point is, Pink was never gonna be happy on Homeworld. Everything Yellow and Blue did to try to make her happy, giving her a new pearl, giving her a best friend, giving her a human zoo, they were all half measures. They were never gonna make Pink happy. Because Homeworld society was never set up to support her, and that is why she lashed out so much. Again, she is like... A kid with undiagnosed ADHD whose traditionalist family is embarrassed of her. They they can't understand why she can't just act like they do, you know? Yeah, Spinel can represent all sorts of things. You know what Spinel also represents is the fucking bunny rabbit that Rebecca Sugar left in her garden that she has written, like, several songs about now. <laughs> you really traumatized yourself with that fucking bunny rabbit. <laughs> Elaine, you edgy, talentless weeb. I feel like I'm reading that one My Little... You are the one being edgy here! Only you! You're like, yeah, this is all about suicide. It's like, like, you're like one of those, like, like, you might as well, this video might as well be like, yeah, what if Steam Universe is really about a kid in a coma, right? And like, like his whole family died, and like his sister committed suicide, and yeah, you know, you're like an edgy 13-year-old dipshit, you know, who can't just even follow what a show is telling you. Like, ugh. Pony fanfic where Pinkie Pie did. 
Oh, you want to talk about Edgy My Little Pony fanfix, Lily, huh? Oh, yeah, you really want to talk about that when you have, like, several horse skeletons in your fucking closet there, Lily? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> now you're just tempting people to call you out on your shit at this point. Also, this art looks terrible. Why is this so oversaturated? I, I know my shadows are oversaturated right now, but I'm gonna fix them. This is like... This is like... 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 Highlighting with the dodge tool in Photoshop bad. Don't do that. Don't do not do that. <laughs> I did that when I was like 15 and was first using like a bootleg copy of like Photoshop 3. Disembowel someone. Only this time the writer's actually trying to make it a serious work of drama. We're trying to have a serious talk about abandonment issues in a show where one episode prior we redeemed a Nazi general with a sick burn. This is the problem with Steven Universe's... The diamonds are not Nazis, but I've already explained this. I'm definitely going to have to make a short of my the diamonds are not Nazis rant from last time because I am just too fucking tired <laughs> to deal with it here. <laughs> the whole there's a lot of solid ideas, really a lot of solid ideas. Like all of them could work in a vacuum, but they never build on any of them because the showrunner gets distracted with another one before they can finish the first one. And when they do, they execute them in the most weird ways possible. You remember the rebellion for individuality and freedom? Over the course of the show, the rebellion is increased. It was for the Earth. It was for the Earth, which, yes, represents individuality and freedom. But that wasn't explicitly what the Crystal Gems were fighting for. You know, again, metaphors, Lily, metaphors. Singly invalidated to the point it was basically Pink Diamond's sick joke. Remember how Shattering Gems was this big line that was too far to cross because it was clearly a fate worse than death? Well, it turns out you can repair Shattered Gems very easily, rendering all that drama... That's not easily. That's... You need all the diamond elixirs to do it. Plus Steven. Plus Steven's tears. Because my whole, uh, my whole theory about this, too, is that, um, Rose's healing tears never came from love. They came from regret. Because the only two times healing tears have worked for Steven was when he was feeling regret. The first time was when he brought Lars back to life, and the second time is when he brought Jasper back to life. <laughs> Tension and weights completely and utterly fucking moot. People point this out to me when I call the diamonds genocidal, that they can actually repair shattered gems, and they say this as a gotcha because it was written specifically to be one, to the people pointing out that a- I mean, I wouldn't say it as a gotcha, I'd just say they're not fucking geno- they're not- it's not fucking genocidal to- to ravage ecosystems to build new things, because that's exactly what we fucking do. Stupid. You could say they're genocidal against other gems, sure, but to the diamonds, the gems are just automatons they made in their image to serve them. Why would they think of them as anything else besides that? That was the whole point. They needed to learn that these were thinking, living creatures that they have made. <laughs> A random instant redemption for genocidal tyrants was kind of disgusting. But they don't realize that they're admitting that the drama and tension of half the show is being completely and utterly destroyed for the sake of a take that at people who are only going to laugh at you even more than they already are. Do you think Nazis are watching Steven Universe and going, Oh, God, the show has taught me the error of my ways. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, indeed. I need I need a fucking breath after that one too, you ignoramus. <clears throat> anyway, Steven anyway. gives Spinel his usual oo woo pep talk, and Spinel agrees to come back and stop the injector. But Steven gets. You mean they sing "Found," which is a beautiful fucking song that came to Rebecca Sugar literally in a dream. But okay. Too wrapped up in preserving his perfect moment from earlier that day, and so Spinel starts to think that maybe Steven was bullshitting her. And you know what? I like this scene. I know I just got done ripping my hair out over the jagged, freaked out tone, but having Spinel start to freak out again because Steven is a selfish prick is great. Spinel starts to panic. No, obviously she freaks out again because she has fucking trust issues, because why wouldn't she? I mean... Look, are, like, see, people don't get Spinel a lot either. Like, Girlie is just having, like... A mental breakdown for an entire day. Like, this isn't her, you know? This isn't her personality. Uh, yeah, she is a bit BPD, isn't she? I do, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with my work, I, I, I run a Steven Universe AU where I uh, made uh, Spinel a crystal gem in place of Pearl, and it's mostly just excuses for me to 
draw Spinel in various situations and ship her with Jasper because it's my fanfic. I do what the fuck I want. <laughs> but if you enjoy that, uh, come by my Tumblr and my Tapless. My Tapless, yeah, my Tapless and shit. Um, and read it. But I do, I do depict her as having kind of an explosive personality still. Uh, but in my AU, Spinel has had like 5,000 years of more lived experience than she does in canon. So I try to write her more like an adult. Because to me, Canon Spinell is kind of a child, and I, I can't help seeing her that way, even though she's like 8,000 years old. <laughs> I keep pausing too much. We're only 19 minutes into the fucking video! It's been two hours! <laughs> Mekin is afraid that she's going to be put away somewhere and left alone again. And Steven keeps babbling that it's not what he meant until he trips over and drops the hard reset keyblade. And then Spinel starts to think that he's going to reset her again. All of this because his what next plans conveniently ignored Spinel. And you know there's- Well, yeah, look at him. He's fucking exhausted. Of course they did. Steven shouldn't have to deal with any of this. This is not Steven's problem. That is the whole point of the fucking movie. I do like how all the char other characters just stand in the background here staring while this happens. Like, technically. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Lily's gonna mention that, because that is pretty funny to me. It's like, you're- Like, there's like eight of you standing there. You could have stopped this. <laughs> you know? Come on, guys. <laughs> Easy solution to that. Steven could just stop, take a deep breath, and say, You're right. I'm sorry. I should have picked my words better. We're not going to abandon you. So you're saying Steven has to apologize to the person who just showed up on his doorstep with a doomsday device. Is that what you're saying? That Steven is responsible for apologizing to the person who just showed up on his doorstep with a doomsday device? After you were just saying that it like it's Pink Diamond's fault that the gems got- that she made the diamonds corrupt the gems. You're victim blamey in this video, Lily. Uh, mm. <laughs> but getting Garnet and me sorted out is very important. Sure, Steven largely misspoke and isn't technically in the wrong, but apologizing anyway would calm Spinel down, and it would act- Well, again, why does he have to, like- <laughs> Lily, you can't even keep, like, your views on things consistent ever. I, I just, I can't even deal with this. Steven has been paying attention to everything Spinel has been saying. But instead, he stammers and stands there like an anime character trying to make a decision while Spinel rapidly escalates. Just give her the scythe. Like, that would be an knowledge Give her the scythe. Why would you give her that? Why would you give it to her? Oh, <laughs> you don't know what she's gonna do with it? She's fucking crazy. Like, Spinel is, like, my favorite Steven Universe character, but she's nuts in this scene. Like, she's having a mental breakdown. Yeah, yeah, right, Skrill. Does Steven look like he's ready to do anything rational? Steven needs a nap. Steven has been up all night. He's fused, like, three times. You know? <laughs> it's like... Ugh... I'm not even complaining here, it's to be expected. This is an unintentional commentary on Steven's behavior. Steven's compassion is very weak. It's very self-serving. It's less about helping people as it is about- Oh, because you'd know any goddamn thing about compassion, Lily, g considering what I've fucking heard you say in these videos. And the weird sexual jokes you were making and trying to accuse Rebecca Sugar of being a fucking pedophile because of the joke painting from pool hopping being in the background. Pool hopping, which you've never seen, because in your last video you said it never came up again, that Garnet has doubts about being the leader. Yes, I do have encyclopedic knowledge of this show, and I'm going to use it. <laughs> when I can spurg about something, boy can I. <laughs> <laughs> his own ego as a good person. This was even the case with Bismuth, where Stephen wasn't really concerned with being right, and then he was concerned with being better than someone. So the sh or he was concerned with not dying. He was concerned with that too, you know? Like, he was concerned with, like, not being killed. <laughs> That's kind of, you know, it's kind of understandable. Bismuth was literally going to hit him with the fucking, the fucking, uh, breaking point. I almost called it the point breaker. That would've been fucking stupid. <laughs> This was literally about to hit him with the breaking point, which could shatter a fucking gemstone. I'm pretty sure it could shatter Steven's fucking skull. So he had to think, you know, last minute and stab her with his mother's sword. Right, and then he was concerned with being better than someone. So the show doesn't really unpack his ignorance or behavior, it endorses them instead. Even the sequel series was less about unpacking his character as it was all the shit he's been through, because his behavior is not something the showrunner- It does both. Oh my god, it does both. 
Which, it, fucking just watch Future. All you ever said about it was you thought the ending sucked, but you didn't elaborate why. So, I remember that from the last video I watched, which is actually a newer video than this one, but that's besides the point. <laughs> consider a problem even though it is. So Spinel decides to reactivate the injector and destroy the earth and takes Garnet hostage and it gets a little weird. Garnet's been written as an airheaded ditz the moment they uh, fuse. God are you gonna say this is a fetish again? You say Garnet being baby is fetish again because the whole again I explained this earlier but I'm gonna explain it again to anyone who just showed up. The entire joke I guess it's not really a joke it's more like an amusing little detail is that Cotton Candy, Cotton Candy Reset Garnet only ever asks questions, whereas normal Garnet never asks questions. That that's just it's just a little writing callback, that's cute and funny. And also, we needed Garnet to be out of the movie for a while because she also would have been able to solve the problem in like ten fucking minutes, just like Connie. <laughs> Probably would have been funny in a vacuum, but the show has had a history of treating Garnet with either scorn, derision, or voyeurism, so I can't take the whole Oh, here we go, here we go again! Here we go again saying, oh, the show sexualizes Garnet. Garnet. Scorn, derision, the show sexualizes Garnet, and guess what? It's the same shot. The same one shot. The only shot in the show you can possibly find where Garnet is being depicted as quote unquote sexy, and it says, and it's from the POV of fucking Jamie the mailman. <laughs> it's supposed to be over dramatic. Because <laughs> Jamie sees her coming out of the ocean and is instantly smitten with her, and that is that is the joke. Uh, God, so yeah. Like, oh yeah, they totally sexualized Garnet so much in the show all the time that I can only find this single shot of it. Fuck you, Lily. <laughs> so I can't take the whole villain speech seriously because this frame here, this is just Becky getting ready to write a Garnet episode on a day ending and why. What? Spinel has her hands on her shoulders and is grinning kind of sinisterly? Okay. That means what? I mean, you should look at some of the shit I'm drawing here. I mean... <laughs> if you want to talk about being a sussy baka, I mean... You know, I mean, obviously I can't help that Spinel's gem is on her chest, but I did sure decide to make the fight go this way, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying anything else about it. Steven snaps the scythe in half, and that causes Garnet to suddenly get her memories back along with her visor, meaning she can... Because she... The truth... The truth made her memories come back, because that's what she's all about. And then she sings an awesome song. No longer make a facial expression. They decide they have to stop Spinel. <laughs> you think she can't make facial expressions because her eyes are covered? What? Maybe you are autistic. I don't know. You can't see somebody's eyes. You think they're just completely blank or something? You, you forget who they are? Are you face blind? What, what is your problem? <laughs> no, no shit, guys. But Steven puts them on rescue duty so they don't steal his glory. Steven can't fight, but he's going to try talking to her. He puts them on rescue duty so the movie has an excuse for him to be the only one who goes and talks to her. And also because, like, if they all just attacked her at once, it's not exactly going to de-escalate the situation, is it? Though, there is the joke to be made here that Lapis could have flown him. She could have, like, just picked him up and flown him to the top of the injector instead of making him climb like a solid vertical wall of glass how is he even doing that <laughs> but i will make fun of that part of the movie if lily doesn't <laughs> because if at first you don't succeed keep copying that one naruto trope until the credits roll and we also learn that beach city doesn't have emergency services apparently does the earth just have like nothing spinel holds him well beach city has just nothing because it's like a tiny town of like 20 people and that it, that's why it's funny that it's called city you know it's kind of like the city of townsville from from powerpuff girls it's it's just a silly name y you know it's just a tiny little beach town so yeah i mean i actually live in a pretty remote area near the ocean and yeah we have like tiny little fire departments but we and they're all volunteer they're not paid <laughs> so yeah this actually isn't that unusual <laughs> him over a chasm and says that now that she knows Steven personally, she wants to kill him even more than she did that morning. Which is understandable. If you knew someone like Steven in real life, you'd want to bash his head in with a pipe wrench. Steven op- I would have given you another half point for that joke if you didn't get so weird with it. If you just if you just said that's understandable, that would have been funny, but then you, you went on too long. Openly <laughs> wonders why his powers aren't back, despite the fact that he's right back where he started. But then he realizes that his powers grew because he grew and learned from all his horrible- 
So wait, you're not you're not talking about the part where he says like he shouldn't be dealing with his mother's bullshit? Like you're just gonna ignore that part because for some reason you think that Steven is another identity of Pink Diamond, even though the ending is about the exact opposite of that. You know, because anything that 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 contradict could possibly contradict your narrative about this show, you just you just conveniently don't show people. You know experiences, which if you've watched the entire show, you will know that statement is not canon, but I guess- Except that... you didn't watch the entire show because you haven't even seen fucking pool hopping! <laughs> I'm not letting that go! There was an interview or something where Sugar said he got woke at some point. Carry on. He magically gets what? all of his powers back and fights Spinel while singing a youth pastor song about faith. And of all of his powers he's gotten back- What?! The song called Change? Is a youth pastor song about faith? Is that a reference to? Is that a meme? Is that a joke? I don't understand. Is that a meme? Is that a reference to something? Or are you just like, I don't even know what the fucking point of that statement is. Yeah, right. If Lapis could steal the entire ocean, yeah, without her, with with her gem being cracked. Well, they did. They did make the point that they can't move the injector or it'll explode. So. Yeah, they did throw that in there. But yeah, Lapis could have at least given him, like, a lift to the top of the fucking injector. Come on, Lapis, you suck so much. God, you just- you just ruin everybody's day, Lapis. Why do you do that? <laughs> Worst gem. Worst gem. <laughs> One of them is his mother's ability to implant unconscious suggestion in people. If you've wondered how Steven can have so much success what? with talking the monster down, one of his mother's powers is literally mind control. And the mind control works as- Mind control? Mind control? Again, you're just you're just misleading people about things in the series. It's like when you thought permafusion was like an actual concept in the actual show and not just a, a phrase that fans use. I, and also in this scene, if you actually played the scene for people to watch, Spinel basically wears herself out. She just wears herself out wailing on Steven's shield until she can't do it anymore because there's no point. And, you know, she has to get all of her fucking anger out first in order to be reasoned with. Like, all Steven does is protect himself from her until she wears, her, wears herself out. That's what happens here. In fact, let's just watch- you know, fuck you, Lily. Let's just watch that scene because you're not going to show it to people. Uh, Steven, universe, movie. Let's see, I'm supposed to be a friend. I'm sure that fucking scene is somewhere. Uh, yeah, 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 here we go. Oh, okay. What's well, an edit, but still. What can work for Garnet? Something about. I want to hurt you so bad. I'm supposed to be a friend. I just want to be a friend. Yeah, like. Huh? Believe me? She had to come to this conclusion herself. You know? It's, ugh. Why is the video buffering? Really oh no, control. what did I do? And the mind okay. control works as Spinel breaks down into tears, the space penis explodes. Again, you're- okay, you're just- you're saying it's mind control that backed her down. So you're just lying about what happened in the scene. You're just fucking lying. And then you skip the part where Steven rescues her from the explosion, despite everything. And, yeah, because it exploded, most of the- most of the biopoison got on the surface and not into the- crust of the earth and so everything was fine yeah it's a kind of lame resolution but the injector wasn't the important part about the musical anyway it's just a macguffin it's just a fucking macguffin that cartoon network made them put in <laughs> steven declares that there's no such thing as a happily ever after just in time to go through his emo phase starts eating dirt and then has a conversation with spinel about friendship just as the diamonds land on the planet honestly i am so happy to see the diamonds because after all of that ill-fitting angst all of that Fake drama, all those weird no more lies. Fake drama? So you were- You were calling Spinel's backstory like suicidal depression earlier, and now you're calling it fake drama? Is she valid in being angry or not, Lily? Like- Size <laughs> parallels. Just seeing these three cringe-ass psychopaths was the kind of levity I needed. If they- Okay, cringe-ass psychopaths is a pretty good description of the diamonds, though, I'm not gonna lie. 
they ever bring the show back, every episode needs to end with a reminder that these three were a decision the show made. The show could do with a little self-awareness of its mistakes instead of constantly trying to act like it. Steven Universe is one of the most self-aware shows I've ever watched in my entire life. Like, that was one of the first things I knew, like, I noticed about it. Like, all the way back in, like, Reformed, where Steven is trying to get everyone to take the fucking Crying Breakfast Friends, uh, quiz. And it's very clear that Crying Breakfast Friends is a stand-in for Steven Universe itself, and how fans of it, like, can't get anyone else into it, and no one else can understand why the fuck they like it. Anyway, I gotta feed my pets, I'll be right back, and then we'll finish up this fucking video. Alright, we got- There's not much left, hopefully. Hopefully nothing else will, will cause me a large amount of psychic damage. Um, no, I can't guarantee that. <laughs> Never makes them. Hell, White Diamond walks off giving the Boomer Mon guilt trip. That's fucking hilarious. Then Steven has the it idea to pawn Spinel off on the diamonds, and sending her off into space to never see her again, all while the diamonds are singing their crappy Doki Doki Literature Club song about their empty nest syndrome, as all four of them cling to- Doki Doki Literature Club song? Like, how is that even- there's- is there even a piano in that song? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you just make these references randomly, like, <laughs> with no rhyme or reason. To ghosts and will never get any better. Basically doing the same thing Pearl did. Because it wouldn't be Steven Universe if the characters involved didn't learn absolutely nothing. Next- What was he supposed to do with Spinel? What was he supposed to do with her? Like, she's not his responsibility. <laughs> that was the entire point. <laughs> Season, Steven turns into a kaiju because his 12-year-old girlfriend refuses to marry him. And that- Um, Connie is 14 going on 15 in future, and Steven is 16. Did, did, you didn't watch future either, huh? Or you didn't even notice! Is it, did it somehow miss the little, the little tight, the little title screen in the beginning there? That, um, shows Steven is 16 years old now? Do you think Connie just doesn't age? Like... <laughs> what is happening? That was the movie. It wasn't very- And also, he didn't turn into a kaiju just cause- Just cause Connie didn't want to marry him. It was the culmination of all of his desperate attempts to find meaning in his life. Fucking watch Steven Universe Future. Actually, don't watch Steven Universe Future, Lily, because you won't understand it anyway. You you seem to have a real hard time following the plots of children's shows. Maybe you should maybe you should stick with like Coco Melon or something. Though you'd probably find a way to call that fascist too. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so to come down from hijinks, the reason I never covered this when it was out was because yeah, how did you miss? How did you miss the? Here we are in the future. <laughs> they sing it like eight goddamn times. <laughs> I watched it and found there was nothing really new to say. I only agree to do it now because my perspective on Steven Universe and its creator has shifted from sanctimonious centrist to this is what Tommy Wiseau would make if he were a weeb and also obsessed with Hamilton. So it so it didn't change at all then. So you didn't change at all, then. You still have the same fuck-ass opinions on this show and its creator. So, what are you talking about? <laughs> Did warrant talking about the show again. All in all, it's just more of the same. If you didn't already like Steven Universe- Well, I still know the only reason you made the newer videos because Hiding in Public called your ass out, and I'm kind of jumping on the bandwagon, too, and I'm just- Well, of course, I'm just, like, in the peanut gallery, just kind of, like, throwing things at you and pretending I'm doing anything, but- <laughs> <laughs> the movie wasn't going to change that. The movie was the exact same set of tropes done in the exact same way as the show. Pink Diamond has a secret other victim. There's a new villain who wants to commit genocide. Steven fixes it with a martyr complex and a speech about change. Really good singers sing the worst lyrics you can possibly- Oh, a speech about change. You do know the song is about change because you tried to say it was like a faith song or some bullshit earlier, which I don't even know what the fucking point of that was other than for some odd fucking reason you try to pretend that Steven Universe is conservative some- how? Oh, hang on, the dog's barking. <laughs> Damn it, I hit the wrong button again. Possibly <sighs> imagine something creepy happens with Garnet, and the tone bounds back and forth between comedy and drama like Sonic- I don't know how you keep trying to give this Garnet is treated like a sex object in Steve Universe ID. I, I, you keep trying to push this, and you can't even back it up. You can only find one single shot to back it up, and it is, again, a shot from the point of view of Jamie the fucking mailman. The, the fucking drama queen, uh, drama club boy, <laughs> who 
who was instantly infatuated with with Garnet, you know, and that that is the episode. Jamie's Jamie's just kind of a spaz, you know. <laughs> trying to justify its existence to an aging fan base. Steven Universe has always carried the stink of the auteur, a pet project, something made for the cre- Stink of the auteur? Like this is a fucking Kojima game or something? <laughs> like, <laughs> like this is a fucking Stanley Kubrick movie? Are you fucking high? It's a children's show about colorful aliens and that are gay. I mean- it's not that deep, man. <laughs> Creator's sake rather than the viewers. It carries the signs of constantly switching to new ideas, overindulgently trying to do everything in one career-defining masterpiece rather than picking a few solid ideas and sticking <laughs> Career-defining masterpiece? Like, Rebecca Sugar was just asked to create a show for Cartoon Network after her work on Adventure Time. Like... It's not like, oh, this was an idea she had since she was 11 and always wanted to bring into the world, like fucking High Guardian Spice or some shit, you know? They developed this series for Cartoon Network. Like, it. why are you acting like this is supposed to be, like, some masterpiece? It's a very good show. It's very influential. There's a lot of great ideas. There's a lot of great design elements. A lot of great characters. I do have my problems with the writing, clearly. I, I express those very, very unapologetically. But I can actually criticize things that I like. Imagine. Imagine being able to do that. Sugar was piling all of her inspirations from anime she watched as a kid and then all of the other random ideas they had during production. And Cran- Like, there are more than- Like, Rebecca Sugar didn't write the entire fucking show- you, you still don't know how TV production works. In them all together, even if they didn't really work. We even see in this very movie that good and clever ideas were ultimately shunted aside for more self- How is that? Like, how is that steg design much different than the one we got? The hair is just different, basically. I don't understand your problem here. Golden <laughs> anime references. Now, this happens in other mediums all the time, especially video games. We've all heard of John Romero, Robert Poloni, and 3D Realms. Hell, we've all heard of Star Citizen. Those are some boomer references, uh, Lily. I don't think most of your audience, who are probably 20-somethings and teenagers, are gonna know about fucking Dai Katana and fucking Duke Nukem Forever. Only people in their 30s and 40s like us know about that shit, Lily. <laughs> heard of John Romero, Robert Poloni, and 3D Realms. Hell, we've all heard of Star Citizen. But it's not often it happens in an episodic TV show, because usually the executives jump in to say, okay, somebody's gotta stop wasting our fucking money. And that is admittedly what happened. Sugar was told in 2016 that the show- I mean, oh, 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 oh are you gonna lie about the ending again? Because in the last video, Lily tried to claim that, oh, Cartoon Network wanted Garnet's ending to be the last episode, but Rebecca Sugar just had to beg for more episodes. Like, completely left out the homophobia of, hey, if you have a gay wedding, we're canceling your show. Because that's what happened. So let's see if you lie about it again or you tell the truth this time. I would only get five seasons, and for those wondering, 2016 was around season two and three. But not quite, because... They learned that... Five was going to be their last during the production of four. And it was because they were going to put a gay wedding in it. And guess what? Like, same-sex marriage was only legalized in the United States in 2015. So at the time, they were pushing it. <laughs> Like, you gotta, like, gotta understand that. <laughs> Not only were they given far more advanced than most people get, they also got a movie and a sequel series on top of them. Well, yes, but that is because... Okay, what happened was, Cartoon Network made them end the show early. So around the time they were producing season five, they got the movie greenlit. And then some brain trust at Cartoon Network went, well... You can't have a movie without a show, so here's 20 more episodes. Just like that, after forcing them to end the show early. And I said it last time, but Rebecca Sugar must be a stronger person than me, because I probably would have just burned down Cartoon Network Studios if that happened to me. <laughs> I would have murdered everybody in the building, I think. <laughs> so good on you, Rebecca Sugar. <laughs> That's a weird way to cancel a show, Cartoon Network. I will confess that out of all the shows I've covered, Steven Universe is the most fascinating to talk about because the problems it has are unusual for any Except show. Except you don't say anything about it. You just make up shit. You just make up shit about it. 
to vilify it. That's all you do. How can it possibly be interesting to talk about to you? Because you don't understand its themes. You don't understand its characters. And you hate the creator for unknown reasons. Because, I don't know, she uh, she keyed your mom's car. She she stole your puppy when you were kids. I don't, what the fuck is your problem with Rebecca Sugar? Like, what, what did she possibly do to you, Lily? <laughs> It or not. Stans generally try to cope by redirecting blame for any complaints away from the executive producer, tacitly ignoring the fact that letting rogue staff members just do terror. Well, who is the executive producer of Steven Universe, actually? Because I don't think you know what an executive producer is, Lily. Um, uh... Okay, Sugar was Rebecca uh, Rebecca, yeah, she was a Rebecca producer. Sugar was an executive producer, but so were all these other fucking people who didn't write the show, you know. And they had another had another producer. They had these editors, you know. Fucking, there was other people. And if somebody is an executive producer, it means they put up the money for the fucking show, Lily. That's what an executive producer is. There's someone who put up fucking money for the show. So you complain about the money people when Rebecca Sugar is one of them. Wow. It's almost like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about or how TV production works. Terrible <laughs> shit without oversight is also a condemnation of the showrunner. I guess this is why people still like talking about The Room or why there's 500 videos about the guy who makes the crazy stalking murderer game. Because there's a fascination with turning over a rock. No, we, we make videos about, well, we, like, I make them, but, we, yeah, people make videos about Yandev because he's just, he's just a, an incel piece of shit and a fucking weirdo who is squandering a very good idea. I still think Yandere Simulator could have been good. If he had just kept it a silly, stupid anime parody game, it could have been fine. It could have worked. But, like, like, when I used to follow Yandere Simulator in the early days... And he started releasing, like, lore and stuff. I honestly thought that it sounding like a 15-year-old American writing their own anime was the joke. But then it gradually became clear that, no, he was for serious about this writing and thought it was really dramatic and good. And I was like, oh, n oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so, yeah, that was... That's what I realized. Maybe Young Dairy Dev doesn't know what the fuck he's doing either. <laughs> Rock and discovering the dark truths behind the creator. But honestly, I don't really think there's some dark truth to Rebecca Sugar. I think the truth is- Really? Because you just accused her of being a pedophile at the very beginning of this fucking video. Like, you outright implied it because of a, of a little joke painting that was a callback to an episode you didn't watch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Pretty tame and boring. When your main inspiration is Utena, and you sit down to write a lesbian- Do not start talking about Utena again. I will find you, Lily. I will find you. <laughs> Being a relationship, guess what it's gonna look like. <sighs> okay. And that's it. It's not really any deeper than that. Weeb didn't know what they were doing. In other news, the sky is blue and a debate bro is screaming racial slurs. Bye bye So you mean you? You're the debate bro, bro screaming racial slurs, right? Because you're the fucking idiot who tried to say, like, that shit was racist last time. Uh, okay, it's over. So, that video wasn't as fun as I thought it was gonna be. I thought- I thought Lily was gonna talk more about the plot and be wrong about that instead of just, like, outright making up things about the plot while being careful not to show footage that would contradict the claims. Like, you're just- you're just full of shit. Am I gonna have to- am I gonna have to slap together another video? With uh, footage from Steven Universe to prove what I'm fucking talking about. Because <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will do that.